Hello, everybody. I'd like to call to order the regular council meeting for Tuesday, July 6, 2021. And it is 6.02. Does somebody want to, um, we're gonna propose a motion that the agenda be amended with the removal of item 5.1. 314 Pure Limited, phase two development permit extension request. And this item will be brought back to a future council meeting. Does somebody on council want to make that motion? Well, Mike. Mike, thank you. Does somebody want to um, make a motion to approve the minutes of June 15, 2020 regular council meeting? I think we have to vote Error. on the, the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Thank sure. you. Um, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anybody have any changes to June 15th, 2020 regular council meeting? I'll move to approve those. Thank you. All right, we have some delegations, uh, department updates. I'd like to have uh, town foreman Jack Velster with operations come and present. Hello. Oh, so, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Oh, getting warm. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of started out with that, uh, the east side of Vista ice rink there that we had done. <clears throat> it wasn't really prepped for this season, the grass work. So we we're trying to put down sod and waiting for PE to continue that. It says it was supposed to be done, but they haven't done it yet. So that will be sodded still. And we've been trying to go around repairing uh, the extension boxes on the valves in the roads that stick up in places. You may see them push up in the spring and stuff. We're going around fixing that. We're gonna start grading alleys here. Uh, Green Tech is uh, going after the gopher holes in town, trying to eliminate some of the gophers in town. They're getting a little <laughs> overrun and we have started replacing the the sign posts for all the stop signs and street ids to metal ones to make it look a little more professional um some of the things we do uh we did preparing the ice rink we did that for the sod we have to repair repair some sprinklers that were broken during the construction because it ran right through where the rink was put uh, street sweeping, line painting is almost done. We got some curbs to do yet, pothole filling. We're gonna be installing some trees in Banta Park. Some trees have to be removed because they're diseased. That was done by that study a couple of years ago. We're just going through the whole program still. Uh, we're mulching the beds, uh, the daily mowing. We had those storts fittings from the hydrants replaced. There was about 10 of them that were stripped. That was an added thing for budget. So that's been done. Flowers have been put in the flower beds, but not on Railway Street yet. Um, we had some trouble with the splash park this year with the, the feature pump was broke. We have to fix that. Now the, we're waiting on a main controller and the PLC to be fixed. That's, uh, that's gonna be a costly item. That's the automation to turn on and yeah. off. And that's why it's running the whole time, which makes it harder on the chlorine level and stuff to keep it accurate. Um, yeah, the grading of the back roads has been a struggle this year. It's been pretty mucky back there. And it's still pretty mucky, but we're working on it. Ordered a bunch of gravel to put on it, trying to mask the problem a little bit. Spraying the weeds around town have been done. Ross Place Green Spray. Space and the boulevards have been reseeded. The weeds look like they're taking over, but he assures me once that the seeds are gone or grown, they'll start weed control in that. And then you'll start seeing more grass. And uh, get some chain link fencing fixed around the ball diamonds, some gates that are out of whack, and a fence up in Harrison has to be fixed. There was a dogs have got out of someone's yard up there. Yeah. And the Spash Park is open, as you know, June 11th. Excellent. Thanks, Jack. 
Does anybody have any questions? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, there was one thing that fence on Stevens, Stevens Street going on to limit. We started fixing some of those a few years ago. We were going to do it this summer, but the price of wood is insane. So we're going to try and wait till the fall yeah. to get the price down a little more. Fair enough. Councillor Gustafson. Um, on the hydrants to repair, you said you had 10. How much is that going to add to our... To our it was about, I believe it was $8,000. Oh, okay. Finally, finally done anyway. And we're going to have to add that to the capital budget. Or did we have enough room? I forget. Thanks for it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Councillor Carlson? No. Councillor Knight? Nope. I just uh, have one question. You're, you're talking about topping up some of the, the gravel to mask the problem. What is the problem? It's uh, we got no base left, basically, and especially north of range of Limit Avenue. Mm -hmm. There's so much mud there. We've had major frost heaves this year. So all the mud has come up. Okay. And it's just so mucky. We're kind of we're I'm, trying to. So you're saying that this is a temporary fix, very not temporary. Okay. Yeah. And that's on Range Road 12, is it? yeah, north of Limit. Okay. It's the worst. And 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 that's that's town property, not yes, it is. Okay. The road is, yeah, yeah. Okay, the road is it's okay. Yeah. And do we have any um, long-term plans to fix that? Other than lots of money. Oh, go ahead. Deputy Mayor Harris, if I just might add to that, I know next year when uh, Vista Crossing comes in with their phase four, I believe it's phase four, they will require to bring in a, a sewer trunk line down Range Road 12. So I think at that time there will be, I mean, the road will be torn up for that work to be done so that they can connect to the South Lift Station. Is it the South Lift or the West, the West, West Lift Station? station. Um, so I believe. I we'll just don't know how far up the north end of limit it'll go. Yeah. I don't know. We haven't seen any of the drawings yet, but we'll include public works on it. And Meryl, does that mean that part of that responsibility will be up to Vista oh, to fix the road? Um, is that through levies or is that the, just their responsibility if they're ripping it up that they would fix it? I feel I'm not 100% sure. I can double check on that and, and bring that back to council, but I feel like part of that is covered through the offsite levies, mm -hmm. but we'll verify. Yeah. Okay. And the timeline's about a year. Well, that's phase four, so it might be. <clears throat> well, they already have phase four approval. They're yeah. one of the develop developments that was given an extension. Yes. So it, it, I believe council awarded them one final extension with no further ex extension. So I believe they're going to be starting the work, the engineering here shortly. Uh, just one last question. Is this something that would be added to our asset management plan as part of our roadways and in maybe a 10 year capital plan? It should be, yes. Yeah. Okay. So if we can um, have that added to that so that we don't forget about it and it's in our plan and yeah, we I'm can forgotten. and we can budget <laughs> for it so that it's not a surprise, that would be great. Yeah. Excellent. Any further questions or comments from council? Uh, no. Just uh, glad that we got that splash park up in time. Yeah. Eh? yeah. Uh, I'm sure our, our, our young residents uh, really appreciate. Oh, uh, for sure. We cross our fingers every day. It stays running. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Or else we'll have to go with uh, ice cream pails and throw water on them. Yeah, no, that That's would right. be good. Yeah, perfect timing for that heat wave we had. Yes. That's for sure. Sure. Excellent. So, Meryl, I'm just curious, um, would we just accept this for information? Yes. Do we need a motion to accept it for you information? Or is that? You can do okay. that at the end. You can accept, you can make one motion to accept. For all of them, would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that then. <laughs> Excellent. And who's um, presenting the water and wastewater? Is Joe, Joe here? Yeah. Joe is here. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Awesome, Thanks, Jack. Okay, if we can have Joe Holstein up to present the water and wastewater. We have some questions. Hey, Joe. Hi there. Good evening. Good evening, Joe. Yeah. So uh, the backflow preventers have been installed in the town-owned buildings, except for the old library and the Golden Key Club. Club. These backflow prevent these backflow preventers are ordered. They should start installing them tomorrow. 
There will be expansion tanks installed as well to the home water tanks and repairs are required for the backflow preventer at the bulk water station. This should all be completed sometime this week. Uh, June 24th attended an online walkthrough of the backflow program with B BSI, the company that will run the backflow program for the town of Crossfield. Uh, very impressed, looks like a great system to have in place to keep our waters safe. Uh, June 29th, flush the water lines at the community center, tested the water for chlorine and bacteria. And that's just because it'd be an unused building. Nothing's been flushing through there. So you just want to play it safe. Uh, water licenses, we got two water licenses registered under the town of Crossfield. We're now set up online to uh, set up online account to report the water quantities diverted from Nose Creek for use of filling of the fish ponds and partial irrigation of the golf course. Uh, under wastewater, our effluent release to Nose Creek started June 30th, will last for 21 days as per code of practice. We're also using a six, six inch diesel mechanical pump just to assist it to get rid of the effluent. Uh, effluent tests were taken. Uh, the disinfection system has been ordered for, from Samson Water Services, should be installed immediately after our effluent release. Where he's got it installed is where the pipe we're using for our discharge at the moment. Uh, the shed required for that new system, Jack actually pointed out, we ended up having one at the library, so we're able to reuse that, save a few bucks there. So that's been moved out there. It's a great shed, got a floor, got a, uh, shingles on it. Uh, pivot pump for the farmland irrigation has been ordered. I'll keep you posted on a time frame. I've also inquired if we'd be eligible for any recycling of the old pieces. They can sell any of that. Uh, North lift station generator was serviced and load tested on June 28th. Uh, under emergency management, March 23rd, met with Rob Morton, Morton from uh, emergency, he's an emergency management field officer, just reviewed our town emergency plans. April 8th, had a regional emergency management meeting with our partners to define expectations and roles between, between municipalities. April 15th, emergency agency meeting and tabletop exercise, which will be uh, entered as the Town of Crossfield exercise for 2021. April 26th, uh, dis discussion of lessons learned from our tabletop exercise, discuss next steps for reaching our objectives. June 17th, met with representatives from Alberta Health Services regarding a vaccination clinic in the town of Crossfield for first time vaccination. Uh, they put the vaccination rates listed for Crossfield was 20.7%. June 21st, regional emergency partnership meeting discuss expectations and roles during emergency. June 23rd, attended discovery, or uh, I'm sorry, a disaster recovery program. Uh, community training session. June 28th, attended a vaccination clinic at the Crossfield Community Center. 68 people were vaccinated. 16 of these people, it was their first dose, and 52 people got their second dose. It was advertised for first dose only as an attempt to encourage people to get their first shots. And then at the end, when they decided there was uh, some extra, then they put an announcement out that they do second doses. So. I was able to get one of those. And that's all I have. Great. Thanks, Joe. Uh, questions from Council. We'll start with Councillor Knight. Mm -hmm. um, can you just add on to that water licensing? I'm just trying to wrap my head around the online account part. So that what so, is the purpose behind that? Sorry. Yeah. So any water use is reported to the provincial government. I just kind of learned about this not too long ago. So what they do is, in essence, just keep track of who's using what water. And uh, through Talk to Alberta and government, I found out there's a website that we can uh, enter this on. So I've signed up, registered for that. And uh, yeah, it's now documented under my job description that every month, whether we're taking water or not, it's documented of how much water the town is uh, taking out of Nose Creek. Okay, thanks. So it's the town as a whole, Joel? I'm sorry? Is the town as a whole how much water use? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, like just, just for Nose Creek, like this has nothing to do with our water, like, like what we use for uh, potable water. That's reported on another website. 
But this, this is just strictly environmental purposes of seeing what the draw is on our natural resources being Nose Creek. Councillor Gustafson. Um, I've got a few here, Joe. On the backflow preventers, um, the program that, uh, that you guys are going to be implementing, are, is that going to be able to catch up on businesses that do not have these backflow preventers already installed? or um, and do we, if not, do we have a, a program that we've gone to all these businesses that maybe don't have them or, and we're checking on them, right? Yeah, now? It, it, basically we're kind of notifying all the businesses now. And my understanding, anything after 1995, most of them do have a backflow preventer. I had a call from a couple of businesses saying, I got no idea if I have one. And sure enough, they did because they were built after 95. Yes. So uh, but they got to be tested annually and checked. So uh, with BSI doing notification, I haven't heard of too many that don't have it, but I'm going to assume there's definitely going to be a few out there and, you know, we'll work to help them with what they need. And, and the cost borne by that would be on the consumer. consumer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And, and, and does that, um, how does that go just onto their, um, their water bill? Well, they, they would have to <clears throat> like get a licensed plumber and it, it's, it, unfortunately it is at their cost, but to get their building up to the uh, plumbing codes. Yes. And then after that, uh, you know, they, they, they'll have to pay the, we'll have a list of contractors that are certified for testing and then they'll have to pay them, so. Okay, perfect. That answers my question there. Um, on the water licensing, um, you have noticed or noted that um, the amount diverted from Nose Creek for filling the fish ponds and irrigating the golf course. Correct. Is it also included for the pivot as well? No, totally separate. Okay. Identity. Okay. That, that would get filed in my year end water report, but th this is just strictly for water taken out of Nose Creek. But, but if, we're, if we're taking water out of Nose Creek to... Um, wastewater that's not being put into Nose Creek? Um, or are you saying, uh, oh, I guess water out of Nose Creek to irrigate? Yeah, okay. that, that's reported under a separate thing. Gotcha. And then our effluents <clears throat> just put in with our wastewater report at the end gotcha. of the year. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, that's clear to me now. Uh, and then you notice or noted that the pivot was ordered. Is there a timeline for in, He was going to talk to his suppliers and get back to me. Apparently, there is some shortage of material in the States and all I that. Can so imagine, yeah. he, he, I asked him to please keep me updated. So if I learn anything, I'll pass it on to Merrill and forward it to you guys. And, and I guess at the latest, you know, it's, you know, we're going to probably, I understand with shortages with materials and all that and labor and, and getting it, it's probably going to be a next year implementation more than likely because yes. we are doing our drain now so we're going to be pretty low and then the farmer has seeded and seeded crops, crops so we don't so want to go into uh, there uh, till the end so all intents and purposes they like, definitely be set up for next year okay and and did we have uh and i know we talked about this before but did we have an idea of how many um what kind of quantities that were able to be pumped through the pivot we're thinking could be 100 to 150,000 cubes. cubes. Yeah. You know, drier year, we might be able to even put more on. Yeah. And, and, and then same hands, wet year, we might not get, Yeah. you know. Gotcha. Yep. That's all for me. Councillor Cornell. No, I asked my question. <laughs> that sounds good. So I just wanted some clarification on the water licenses, if, if that's all right. Uh, we have two water licenses. Our, each one of them, one for the pond and one for the irrigation, or how does that work? Yeah, correct. One's like back in the day, we call it the beaver dams, but originally the water used to come out of there and we had a license to draw that to supply the town of Crossfield water. Yeah. So in essence, we thought that license had passed, but because we're using it for the, uh, just strictly for filling the golf course, then that's uh, reportable. So we got to report how much water we're taking out of there. And then the other one is uh, another license because it's pulling out of Nose Creek. So they're all intertwined, but we got one pulling out south of town, another one west. So two separate licenses. Right. And that's the fish pond, one for the fish pond, one for the golf course. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm just curious, um, we're using a lot of our uh, clean effluent to pump into the golf course 
is yeah like this this one's nose creek and i think on the west side it's back nine linden called it so that's going to be so. that's what they're pulling out of nose creek for the nose creek license so when we do the effluent that's for the golf course on the east sorry i'm not a golfer but that's the, the front uh, it's the front nine the yeah. front nine oh, thank okay. you yeah i'm sure of it okay and then how much are we allowed to take out of there? Because that could uh, fluctuate on any given year, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but like there, there's no real limit. But I mean, with that being said, like we're not going to be able to saturate the farmer's field because eventually the pivot just spins out. You know, we, we kind of got to work with the farmer. You know, we don't want to flood anything out. The golf course, as much water as they can take to keep their grass green. But, you know, it is limited. Like, you know, we can't have the runoff or flood out the yeah. field. That's for sure. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions? None for me. Okay. Well, it looks like, uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, really nice. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Um, so now we'll call up uh, Department Manager Brian Canool to report on the arena. Hey, Brian. Can you all? Thank you. So I don't have a, stuff to go on that's going on right now is um, <clears throat> we're going to get the dressing room benches done. Um, that's through Big Hill Services. I had to, two uh, contra bids, but uh, I had a third one, but they backed out. But this one will come in under budget and uh, should start on the 14th of July and completed. He figures it might take about a week. Uh, then uh, this plant startup, uh, where Simcoe is coming in to do that, but we have to change out relief valves. They're due every five years, and this is the fifth year. So they were estimated about $3,000 for that part, and we're going to start the plant at the same time. So I'm going to bring them in on uh, September 9th, and that gives them a few days' work before we can get going. Um, the arena boards we're, we're going to have cleaned that gets cleaned before the ice goes in. Um, ice in, we're, gonna, we're aiming for the start uh, September 11th and ready to skate by the September 20th. That's how everything goes right. Uh, groups are notified and it seems like they're all ready to go. So it'll be the, uh, the 20th of September. <clears throat> excuse me things that are done we're, we're getting an energy audit done and that's on july 9th um we're hoping to have the results quickly because that's part of the uh, mc cac uh, grant we're looking for for the plant to get the plant redone and we need that done first to see if we qualify and i think russ and my staff are working on that also uh the things we did like uh replaced all, like, a lot of the broken tiles and in, in the lion's loft and different things uh light switches receptacles in the office and we put in the tamper proof so a little safer for the kids um, a lot of painting been done uh, office place some flooring in the office that it was old and needed and uh, added lockers due to covid we put lockers in a in a separate room so that people could use it as a change room and keep their belongings separate we're going to do all the glass all the arena glass gets done uh dress rooms completed their are being painted and completed before the installation of the new benches. Um, and then everything, the arena pad swept and, and everything cocked and ready to go before the plant gets turned on. And then we have this staff coming in. Hopefully, I got the end of September, but hopefully by mid-September, uh, we can start on that. I think I'm bringing back most of the people that we had. Um, they they want to come back, so we'll do our orientation and training at that point. And that's about all. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Does anybody have questions for Brian? And I'm going to start with Councillor Nelson. No. I'm glad to see the arena is actually getting a little bit of a facelift. It needed it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit here and there. It, uh, it helps. And, and I got time to do it. We didn't have the lacrosse this year, which is unfortunate, but fortunate in a way yeah. that we can take care of some projects. Councillor Gustafson. I have a few. Um, last Saturday, I believe it was Saturday when we were at the um, at the farmers market when we Thursday. That was last Thursday, July first. July first. Seemed I'm, like a Saturday. I know. You know, it, it felt <laughs> it like it, it felt like a Saturday. I guess it was a uh, <laughs> deer it was, in the headlight. <laughs> it, it, it was a uh, it was a holiday. Mm -hmm. I did notice some damage to the east wall. 
Right. And um, a lot of bent tin. Um, what, I guess, is there a plan yet for that or anything to prevent that? It looks like it's vehicles backing into it. Yeah, there, it's been going on for a few years. We've had uh, Trevor even look at some video of people doing it, but it's pretty tough at night to, to watch. We've seen them do it. We've seen them back in. Uh, it's a lot of the kids running around. It, it's late at night. Um, the, there's no point in replacing it until we can figure out a way of putting in barriers that will keep them if they hit something, they're going to hit a, a concrete barrier first. So Jersey barriers. That's what I want. Yeah. All, we, all the way along there. Yeah. All the way along. And I noticed that they will target the, the North end and then the, the West end, but yeah, you know, I don't know if you surround the whole building, but yeah, that one especially gets hit because the kids do donuts and they do a lot of stuff in there in the winter. And I, I know it's there. It's, it's coming up. It's going to be part of my uh, mm -hmm. uh, budget plan for Lori. Okay, but it's it's been done. It was only done, I think, about three, four years ago. Yeah. So yeah, it needs to be done again. But there's no point in doing it a second time or a third time before. There's no chance of any structural damage that that. Uh, I think it's just tin. It, I think it's bent. It looks like they back into it, and it's funny. So yeah, yeah. I don't think it's I'm sure there's it. lots of solutions to to fix that. And yeah, and that's not, not just education, but some some actual physical barriers. There it has to be physical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one more question. Yep. Uh, with the ice out, and I know you had talked about lacrosse not um, coming in. Uh, was there any um, inquiries from any other groups wanting to come in and, and you know possibly create some? I know we're starting to open up again, but we've got you know maybe a month or two months. I know there's not a lot of time to coordinate things, but to 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 create a little bit of revenue for that uh, for that property. I don't know. You know, nobody's really approached because they know they never knew when this was going to stop so yeah and we haven't had we haven't had that i did contact lacrosse because i know i know the people that run it and they only use two two uh pads out of uh eight mm -hmm. and they're done and they usually end at the end of june but they finished when it shut down again um they're not going to start up i think they have uh junior and uh, senior other than that i had some interest in uh a, a ball hockey league out of airdrie again but once again they they didn't open, they didn't use it there. And we kind of, I kind of keep in touch with Airdrie and what they're doing and follow them. And they seem to get people first and then we get it second. Yeah. And uh, nothing right now. I, I think we have the, these dog races. I, I haven't talked to her yet in August <laughs> and they come for the weekend. And uh, other than that, no, I mean, it hasn't, I haven't had a lot of interest, but I think it's a down year. And it's, yeah. It, it's going to turn around. Yep, for sure. All right. That, that's all I have. Thanks a lot. Brian. Great. Anything further for Brian? I got one question. Sure. The dressing rooms and benches, is that just a, like a physical replacement like for like? Are there any more space in the rooms or is that just? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to wall mount them yep. uh, with brackets and then put, uh, it's a half inch puck board and it's going to go into the corners. So we're going to have access to, along the wall, the corners. So it's not going to be benches. They're going to be solid. They're, they're not going to be tipping and moving and stuff. And replacing, and we're doing all the dress rooms, the multi-use room, and the uh, ref slash coach coaches room. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Jack, did you have a question? He had his hand up. <laughs> Jack, I got a question for Jack. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Next up, Director of Community Services, Russ Nash. You always get the long ones, Russ. Yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> Does it just mean that you work twice as hard as everyone else? No, or? I probably going just on here? give you that. She's probably right down too much, that's all. <laughs> just a little long one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, so good evening. Um, so yeah, I'll just go through my, uh, my report here. Uh, touch on the... The bigger things so the community center um has now been allowed to open up with all of the relaxation of our uh health measures um so we're getting that ready to reopen um just making sure everything's working water's clear we did some water testing in there um getting the furnaces working making sure the sound system works um 
we had some weddings that were kind of tentatively booked for July, but um, just with the timing of everything, a lot of them did cancel because they just didn't have enough time to get things together. But August is filled up. I think there's only one weekend left in August. September, I believe, is about the same, and October is completely full. So awesome. it's coming back. Yeah. Um, so I've had uh, the caretaker. Um, he's been in there getting things ready to go. Um, thermostats, I did replace all the thermostats in the building. Um, we did have an issue with the one in the main hall. Um, so I went, I decided I was going to change them all out. I changed them all out to smart thermostats so that I can have control of them through my phone because we do have issues with people messing with them. And then I go in there and it's 12 degrees in the winter time. And so, so, uh, I can keep an eye on that better. Um, I did get a surge protector installed on the electrical panel that supplies power to the furnaces. We were having issues and we actually ended up with a, a, a I don't, I can't say for sure that it ha was the cause of it, but the VFD, the variable frequency drive for the main hall um, makeup air unit did get fried. I don't know for sure if that's what happened. That's my guess. Um, so I had to get that replaced. It took a long time to get one, but I did get it in finally here in early June. Um, and then we discovered some other problems that uh, the main hall thermostat was also not working properly and there was a short in some of the wiring and one of the time delay relays wasn't working properly. So those were all fixed. It took some time to diagnose all that, but now everything cross our fingers is good and ready to go. Um, I'm waiting to finalize the last quote for the rooftop access and work platform. Um, just like in the uh, rest of the construction industry, the, those ind that industry is quite busy too. So, and steel prices have gone quite high. So um, anyway, I'm waiting on that last quote and then I can move forward with that. <clears throat> um, the new stage curtains in the main hall were installed by the, uh, the ACTS group, the Artists of Crossfield Theatre Society. They look really good. Um, as Brian mentioned, um, we're working with Mustafa to, uh, to get an energy uh, engineering study done on the building to, in order to access some grant funding. And we're also getting some building assessments done on both the arena and the community hall, which will um, provide some information for us to, in order to be able to uh, do some life plan uh, or some life cycle planning to make sure that we can uh, address what needs to be addressed moving forward. Um, I assisted operations in getting the splash park up and running for this year. And um, one of my 2022 budget requests is gonna be to uh, uh, hire a consultant to perform a recreation and community needs assessment for the town. Um, it'll give us again, kind of a roadmap of what we, uh, what the residents would be looking to to get in town and uh, so we can put some planning together to uh, have projects ready for when grants come up. So that's gonna be one of my requests for 2022. Um, that's kind of the community services and, and facilities end of things. Move into emergency management. Um, as everybody knows, as of July 1, the province moved into stage three of their reopening plan. So most public health restrictions have been removed. Um, there are some masking requirements in healthcare settings and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but pretty much everything is, is, is mostly wide open. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Alberta Health Services did hold a drop-in vaccination clinic at the community hall on June 28th from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, They're trying to increase for first dose vaccine rates in, in areas that had low uh, rates. Um, they told me that they, they administered a total of 68 vaccines, uh, for it. So they weren't, you know, that's not a, a huge amount, but I guess it's 68 more vaccines that, uh, weren't out there before. Um, Joe, Ben and I attended a, a tabletop emergency exercise and workshop with Rockview County back in April. Um, we've been working with the county on our regional emergency management program. Uh, we've been with working with them on that for the last it's got to be two or three years now, so it's going, it's going really well. Um, I did attend a Director of Emergency Management course on May 27th and 28th. 
um, which is required through the local authorities emergency management regulation. So that's done. Um, just over the coming months, uh, we'll be working on updating our, our evacuation plans, re reception center plans and all that sort of stuff. And in November, Rocky View County has scheduled a live emergency management exercise. So we will be taking part in that as well. Uh, for safety, um, I've attended a, a few meetings with the, uh, with the Alberta Municipal Health and Safety Association. Um, I've provided uh, all of our safety orientations to summer staff, as well as our new receptionist, Lori. Um, uh, we held a, a health and safety committee meeting to discuss current health and safety concerns and, and go over recent incidents and perform a formal safety inspection on the fire hall. Uh, I attended a virtual workshop through AMSA uh, to learn about how to create an online orientation program I want to try and develop. And I will be starting to prepare for annual safety audit, uh, which usually takes place in the fall. It's usually October. So um, this year will be an internal audit again. It's our last internal audit. The next year we, we get an external audit uh, from another municipality. Uh, moving on to FCSS. So Eris and I completed the final report to the province for 2020 FCSS funding. Uh, it's a requirement and we're also working on completing our outcomes report, uh, which is due at the end of July. Um, the Crossfield Day Camp Society decided not to proceed with their summer program this year. So um, they were approved for $5,000 of FCSS funding. Um, so I do have another report here um, requesting council to approve a reallocation of those funds. So I'll get to that here in a bit. Um, uh, just been working with WG Murdoch to make sure that they're able to utilize their FCSS funding with all the shutdowns and restrictions. Um, we were also working with the local equestrian therapy business to offer sessions to, uh, to some local residents here through that program. Um, we've uh, <coughs> letters of intent to uh, uh, have been sent out to, to currently funded groups and it's been advertised to the public as well. Um, we just request these letters so that we have an idea of how much funding we're going to be looking at uh, having to dole out and uh, just to make sure that the, what the groups are asking for is eligible. And then the applications for 2022 funding will be available on August 3rd and they'll come to council in October or sorry November. They're due in October. Um, moving on to grants. Um, I've submitted project update to Make a Diff Sports uh, to uh, for their grassroots community sport innovation funding that we received for the outdoor rink in Amory Park. Uh, following that, we just have to finish up our final report, which also includes a, a video that we have to submit. Um, we were approved for funding through the Canada Summer Jobs to assist with summer student wages. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's a program that provides a subsidy of 75% of minimum wage for each approved position. Um, usually it's 50% minimum wage, but uh, it was increased for this year as a result of COVID. Um, we uh, last year received a $43,000 special services grant through the province, uh, all related to COVID. Um, we got it in order to provide food hampers to residents in need. Um, that program ended on June 30th. Um, so we're just working on that uh, reporting as well. Um, as I mentioned, working with Mustafa and Brian to complete the energy an energy engineering study on the arena so that we can access grant funding through the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. Um, the, the, another grant program that's out there is the Green and Inclusive Community Buildings Program. Um, I'm gonna be working with department managers so that we can put some projects forth to that program. Um, on an on, it's, it's on an ongoing basis. So as we're able to, obviously we'll be coming to council to you know, kind of run those plans by everybody here as well. Um, but we wanna try and take advantage of that program as well. Um, we received a $50,000 grant from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities through the Municipal Asset Management Program to help implement a GIS system for the town. Mustafa is working on that project and we have until November 27th to, uh, to spend that money. Um, we also were approved through Alberta Municipal Affairs for the Municipal 
uh, stimulus program. And I know that was another uh, COVID program. Um, total of $401,421 was approved for that to fix Munson Street. Um, and Mustafa is also working on that right now. Um, part of the final reporting for that, or, or part of the reporting for that, is uh, the, the provincial government wants to see how the town is working to reduce red tape. So we've got some, some initiatives there as well. Um, and then I attended a grant opportunities webinar from Alberta Council on June 14th and 21st, uh, which provided information on how to develop successful grant applications. So, uh, community development, Eris and I have been attending regular meetings across your wellness network. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's, it's a group that has been put together. It's a joint initiative between Alberta Health Services and the Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, we did receive grant funding from them, and uh, <clears throat> it's made up of local community members and stakeholders that sit on this coalition to come up with programs, initiatives, and ideas to help improve the overall health of the community and access to mental health resources. Um, it's intended to be driven by community members, so Eris and I are involved as liaisons uh, between the town and the group to make sure that information is passed back and forth and make sure that they know, you know uh, what they might need to do or be able to answer questions on behalf of the town. So um, we are also the fiscal agent or the backbone organization for this for the program. So we're we are responsible for holding the grant funds that they they've given to this group, and we we make sure that it's uh, it's spent on appropriate programs and initiatives and according to the uh, eligibility requirements. So a total of twenty thousand dollars was received from AHS for the Alberta Healthy Communities Initiative, and twenty seven hundred was from uh, the uh, Canadian Mental Health Association for the Rural Mental Health Initiative. And then the group has actually also just recently successful in getting a, another $5,000 grant through the uh, Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, so, so far they've completed a couple assessment tools and they're, they're starting to gather ideas for um, projects that they might wanna see come forward. So uh, they do, like I said, they do have the grant funding in order to be able to spend on these projects. Um, <clears throat> let's see here, uh, for recreation programming, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, like I said, the emergency food hampers program has wrapped up, um, 262 food hampers were provided to residents in need, um, as of June 22nd. Um, we do have a bit of food left. Uh, stockpiled, so uh, we will continue offering that program. They'll be a little bit reduced from what they were before, but uh, uh, we will be able to still help people until that stockpile is depleted. <coughs> um, day camp, as I mentioned, um, unfortunately, they decided to cancel their program for 2021 um, because of uncertainties with COVID-19. So that program is not going to be running. Normally, it's a six-week program that runs for kids ages five to 12, but uh, um, they are wanting to get back at it next year. So we'll make sure that that happens or help them make that happen. Um, we've been advertising for a recreation supervisor position for the summer, but unfortunately we haven't been able to fill it yet. We do have uh, one lead actually that we're working on right now. So hopefully we have somebody in place to help get a few things going in, in town this summer. Um, it's not going to be as extravagant as we have in the past, but we want to get some stuff going. Um, we are hoping to offer a drive-in movie. Uh, it says here that uh, it's tentatively booked for August 28th following the Elks Derby, but there was some uncertainty in if that was going to happen or not. And actually the drive-in movie people aren't able to be here that weekend. So Eris actually just today uh, was looking at uh, Friday the 13th of August. So um, looking at holding it at the rodeo grounds with some, some fireworks and food trucks and kind of trying to make a, a, a big event of it. Um, Eris is also working with the Chamber of Commerce for a food truck frenzy, which is tentatively booked for mid to late September. Um, a Meet the Teacher barbecue has been scheduled for Wednesday, September 8th, uh, that we're hoping to bring Community Fest back to collaborate with that event. So if you're not familiar with that, in the past few years, we've, we've combined with the Meet the Teacher event with the schools in between the schools. Um, and invite community groups to come out, give information to the uh, to to residents to uh, you know give information on what their their group or project does, uh, sign people up, all that sort of stuff, just to help 
promote uh, our local groups. Um, the Helping Hands 4-H Multi Club um, has built and installed a frisbee golf course in Veterans Peace Park. I did see some uh, that some councillors were there for the grand opening on July 1st, so that was good. Um, hopefully that takes off. Um, good Deeds tickets were updated and are going to be handed out by the Peace Officer and RCMP to youth around town that they witnessed doing good deeds and making good decisions and choices. So. Um, everyone who receives a good deeds ticket will be entered in a draw for a prize in, in December. And I think they also get uh, little coupons for uh, some local stores here. Um, what else do we got here? And uh, Eris is just working on plans for our upcoming bigger events in the fall and the winter. We got the pumpkin hunt coming up. We've got winter wonderland and the New Year's Eve dance. So those plans are underway. Um, I think that was it for, for that report. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the length of it. Great. Do you need a drink of water or anything? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Excellent. Thanks, Russ. Uh, Councillor Knight, questions? No, not really. Okay. Councillor Cornell. Yeah, Russ, do you have a projected date on when the hall will be fully operational so people can start using it again? It is now. It is now? Yeah, okay. it's fully open. It's just... Whether or so we not. can start pushing people, they can rent it again. Yeah, it's open. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, the exercise groups can come back, but typically they either take the summer off or now Jazzercise has actually started to hold classes outside uh, just with the nice weather and stuff. But okay. Yeah, I think just some of the stuff that we had booked in early July, people just didn't have time to, to organize it. It's so. hard when it's the wedding or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just so we can let people know it's available now. We can start yeah, it's, some it's back in. available and open to be booked. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. As good. Always. good. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Sorry. it's all there. <laughs> okay. oh, I'm good. That was a good report. Um, <laughs> So I don't know if I just carry on with the... Uh... I, I do have a couple oh, of questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so just to comment, so I'm glad to see that we're um, hiring out for a recreational needs assessment. I think it's important to reach out to our community and see what their needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that in that report that we have uh, a way of reaching out to the groups and measuring um, activities currently and what the use is. So for example, if people are screaming for another rink, we want to be able to know what those numbers are currently and if the, our uh, arena is at capacity, because if it's not, then there's no sense in building another one till we are at capacity. So I'm hoping that those types of questions would be in that needs assessment, but your consultant should be able to guide you on that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. But we'll make sure that we, uh... Uh, note that to them when we start off. Yeah, and I'm sure there's some other municipalities too that would be willing to to um, share some of their mm -hmm. questions and needs assessments yeah. as well. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about the GIS system for the town. Uh, what are the results that we're looking for in, in that uh, GIS program? And is Mustafa doing the whole program or are we hiring that piece out? I'll have to refer that to Mustafa. Okay. Um, we can address it during your report. That would be fine. Yeah. Okay, great. So keep that one in the back of your mind. Awesome. On your projects that have already been started um, with some of the members of the group, on doing the painting or wrapping of power boxes around town. Mm -hmm. um, typically, art projects are vetted through an entity or something like that. Is that something that would be vetted through the rec department, through council, or just through your department? Well, that's something that we'll have to uh, address when they kind of finalize their planning for that. So uh, if it's council's wish to have them present to council, we'll definitely have them come and present to council yeah. um, or the rec board or. I know that the rec board was looking for um, more yeah. um, responsibilities. So, yeah. oh, I, so think I, th I think it would be probably appropriate to go to the rec board or something sure. like that. But uh, again, if, if council would like a presentation, we can also get them to come here as well. So 
Really good, thank you. Anything else? No, just um, a really good job on, on getting grants. I love seeing that. Yeah, Thank it's you. it's a lot of work. I can't wait for Courtney to come back. <laughs> right, and the yeah. Alberta government has just throw it out yes, grants these days. So they there's are. lots to tap into. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, so I just might as well go into if if everybody's yes. good there. Uh, I might as well go into my uh, just uh, for the out reallocation of FCSS funding. Just um, so a quick background at uh, the December one council meeting, council approved an allocation of five thousand uh, dollars to the Crossfield Day Camp Society for twenty twenty one FCSS funding. And unfortunately, just recently they've decided to cancel their program. So as a result, we have uh, five thousand dollars in funding that needs to be reallocated. Um, there are two organizations who currently receive funding that indicated they could provide more programming and services for Crossfield with additional funding, and that's the Boys and Girls Club of Airdrie, as well as uh, North Rockview Community Links. Um, both of these organizations provide a lot of services to a broad range of Crossfield residents, uh, um, including um, activities for youth on days off from school, so their PD days. Um, coordinating additional programming and counseling services with the schools and working with youth and families to build resiliency and cop coping skills following the, the pandemic. Um, if you're not familiar with FCSS uh, and how that program works, um, we do get funding uh, from the provincial government. Um, it's provided uh, on a 75%, 25% split. So the 25% is the town's share, 75% from the province. Um, and it's got to, it must be spent on programming that enhances the social well-being of Crossfield residents, and it's got to be used by nonprofit groups. Um, so we are proposing that uh, the five thousand dollars be reallocated um, as follows: uh, twenty five hundred dollars to the Boys and Girls Club of Airdrie, and twenty five hundred to the North Rocky View Community Links. Um, so yeah. Excellent. Any questions for Russ on? The funding. Was there anything publicly put out there on any of our social media things for any other groups maybe looking for money before we allocate this there or was that just no okay. it wasn't no. So I think that with um, FCSS funding there's only specific um, yeah. things that you can apply for related to prevention yeah. um, not just any group can apply is that correct? That's correct yeah okay. yeah. yeah it's it's fairly uh, uh, limited in what you can uh, use like it, it can't be directly recreational it can't be food supplies it can't be that sort of stuff so and we yeah so and we got to report that back to the government so okay yeah. those are very specific yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah excellent so any further questions for russ on that no he was would somebody cool. like to make a motion uh, to allocate um the funding to the Boys and Girls Club and to North Rocky View Community Links. I'll make that motion. Oh, oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks, all Russ. All in favor. All in favor. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> all right. Great. Well, thank you. That's funny. I even Thanks, had Russ. that written down. That's it. <laughs> Excellent. Vote. <laughs> Vote. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Hi. Lori, finance update. Okay, so for the year end financials 2020, we did get the extension from the government to August 31st. I got the letter today. Um, we're still waiting on the ministry acceptance of the MSI project. Um, Mustafa sent an email and it's three months. So the three months is up July 20th. So hopefully we'll hear before then. And then I can pass the information on to the auditors once we finish the SFP. Budget 2022. So the initial email went out to the managers last month. Um, I will be starting July 19th, setting up meetings with individual managers um, to go through line by line operations as well as capital. I'm hoping to present early September to council. Um, regarding my position or my area in finance, um, I've now asked the accounting assistant to work with me one day a week in the office. Um, to assist with day-to-day -day activities that have kind of been put on the back burner due to the extra work. So she's working now Wednesdays 
assisting me. And when the new CAO is hired, we'll see what's taken off my desk and if I need to have somebody more than three days a week. Um, we are behind on certain items. The bank recs are behind. It's mostly account reconciliations that are behind. Um, I have major projects coming up. I have the TCA project with the revitalization program. I have the contributed assets that we received. Um, so those are two major projects that I have to do in the fall as well as working on the budget. And by the end of July, a letter will go out to owners for residents um, in arrears. Um, they'll have up to March 31st, 2022 to pay the taxes. And if not, the, the properties will go up for tax sale. And I have five properties. Five? Yeah. Great. Questions for Lori? None for me. Councilor no. Nate? We're pretty positive that ministry acceptance is going to come back fairly soon. They said up to three months. Yeah. And it was sent July 20th. So we've been asking once a month to say what's the status of it. Like, and all they say is that it takes this time to get there. When so was it's sent? July, tw uh, sorry, April 20th. Okay. So July 20th is the deadline yeah, for you. the three weeks, three months that we need to have. So technically it's been approved, but until we get the minister approval, we can't go forward. Oh, thanks. I just have a, a question just for clarification. What are the seven roll numbers not in agreement with the town? So you have that on your second page under your tax letters to owners in arrears? In brackets on, on your last. Oh, I have to. There's some real old roll numbers that I need to go through and clean them up. So that's another special. So there's not project. really attached to a house or, no. or anything? Currently. No, it's just roll okay. numbers that need to be cleaned. Okay. That's great. And that's also another project that I have on my list is to go through all the tax roll numbers and make sure that everything has a street address because not all of the town properties have a street address. Okay, that sounds good. And this may be a question that I have in one of the other reports, but um, are we going to be looking at a 10 year capital plan for our major projects? And would that follow? Yeah, it's on you? my desk at the moment. So okay. yes, when I'm sitting down with the managers, I had previously asked all of them to look at what's in their areas, like kind of make an idea of this is operations, this is what needs to be done every one, two, three, four, five years, mm -hmm. as well as capital projections out because I don't have any basis to start with. So I'm basically starting all this from scratch. Perfect. Yes. Thank so it's you. part of my budget. Excellent. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> any other questions for Lori? No. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Lori. Mustafa, you're up. Good evening. So uh, within the department itself, uh, we are currently working on the railway uh, project itself. The end is near. This is at least, but um, as of right now, we have about 5% of concrete remaining on Railway Street itself. Um, at the time when I was writing it, there was about, we were hoping to be about 40% landscaping or about 50, 55% just because of the extreme heat and then the rain that we're supposed to get this week. So both of them isn't really helping us out. And then we have a couple of decorative items left and it's pretty much a similar thing onto the side streets itself. Uh, we are still projected to finish by the end of July. Uh, the next component is the GIS system itself. So MARMAC has been selected as the town's new uh, asset management platform itself. Um, so our consultant is currently working on purchasing the software and creating the asset management platform itself. Um, we had discussions today to uh, basically be posting a summer students position that was approved as part of uh, the rest of the submission over there for a GIS intern. Uh, their role is basically going to be uh, to go take up uh, survey data points for valves, manholes, and everything like that, just to make it easier in the future for when we are looking for stuff like that uh, itself. Uh, in regards to the question you asked on how we will be addressing that position itself, um, the discussion that was had with the previous CAO for this position itself was uh, for the upcoming capital budget, or sorry, uh, operational budget, we will be bringing IT in-house uh, and we would be posting a position for a IT GIS com combo 
when it comes down to it. But again, that would be a discussion that we would have to have uh, at time of budget and how that number looks like at that point itself. Uh, the next item itself is the Munson overlay project itself. Uh, so the project was awarded to uh, Grindstone Paving and Excavation Limited. Um, we have basically uh, prepared the contracts. The contracts have been sent out to Grindstone for execution. Once Grindstone has uh, signed them, it uh, comes to the town for execution afterwards. And once that comes into place, we will be reviewing their traffic accommodations and uh, be uh, also coming up with a gate plan on how to do the project so it has minimal impacts on the residents itself. Uh, and that will all be communicated through our social media platforms. And as always, they will be delivering uh, letters to anybody that will be affected and uh, letting them know what alternative routes are there. Uh, the next two components are basically the ice plant assessment and the community center assessment itself. Uh, both of those projects were awarded to WSP. Uh, so uh, currently right now we're gathering information to submit to uh, WSP as part of their assessment component. Um, so WSP itself, uh, they were also on the approved list of one of the contractors for one of the grants itself. Uh, so we had about a list that we could select. We asked about five people for quotes. Uh, we only received about two. Uh, and the two that we received was WSP and Stantec, and uh, WSP basically provided the best value to the town. Uh, the uh, another component that we've been working on is just grants, trying to figure out uh, as many or trying to find as many grants as possible, just to uh, mediate the costs on the municipality itself and uh, help grow uh, the municipality. Uh, downtown banners were completed this year, and they have been installed. We've also been doing a review of shallow utilities. So uh, we get submissions from ATCO, Fortis, TELUS, ATCO, and all them uh, in regards to upgrades or anything that they do, as well as development reviews. Um, and the last component would be the 60-day cell, uh, which is our uh, facultative cell. So the engineering has been awarded to All North, and All North has started on that component itself. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Excellent. Uh, Councillor Gustafson. On the Munson Street overlay, um, I know it's it's hard to tell end of summer or end of 2021 or summer 2021. Do we have more of a concrete, you know, kind of a, we know generally when, yes. when they're going to start and finish? So um, as part of the tender uh, package itself, the uh, date of completion uh, off the top of my head, I believe I put in either it was end of August or end of September. I'd have to double check, but I could double confirm that and send that out to council. Okay. And if they do not finish within that time, they are going to be subject to uh, liquidated damages. Um, how long does the, the project actually supposed to take? It is roughly uh, supposed to take about a month, a month when mm -hmm. it comes down to it. Weather depending, the magical word right there. So, um, you know, as well, uh, uh, based on that, we're projecting about a month right now. All right. And then on the 60 day cell, yes. um, the, could you just maybe, I guess, elaborate for not just, just council, but more for the public on, on what we're thinking of doing for the 60 day cell? For sure. Uh, so for the 60 day cell right now, uh, uh, based on the initial report that was brought to council, uh, all North's recommendation was to do an aerated system. Uh, so the area system, based on the conversations we've had with Alberta Environment, in principle, they say it should not affect our code of practice, which really helps ease us into it. Uh, the other component is, is one of the biggest things we have to figure out is whether it's going to be a deep aerated system or a upper aerated system. Um, again, one costs more than the other, and we're trying to figure out what's the most effective way to treat the 60-day cell to actually reduce the, the, the amount of treatment to 45 days itself and increase our capacity. So the first component of that is actually doing the whole uh, study and trying to figure out what the best way to approach that. After that, we will be doing a design build uh, contract for that component itself. So basically what we'll do is we will set out a spec for proponents that are looking to bid on it. And we will identify what the spec that they need to meet is. And based on that, we select the best option that comes for the town. Uh, and then based on that, we just let them construct it. We will do our inspections as we go uh, and there will be three milestone payments for it one would be at completion of their uh, engineering drawings with stamps on it the second one would be once uh, all the materials on site and the final payment will typically be 
once everything's at base C, or sorry, uh, once everything's completed and substantially completed. So when, when, when they, they've done the study, they've implemented the, um, I guess the materials or whatever needs to be done to do the aeration. Testing will be done after that. Um, is there a guarantee that, um, that the work that they are going to do is going to help our 60 day cell, bringing it down to possibly a 45 day cell and being able to move that over to the lagoon quicker. Yeah. Um, so are they kind of going to be able to provide us a bit of a guarantee that this is going to happen or they're going to go, Oh, well, it didn't work, but we've taken your money and, you know, you know where I'm getting at? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's going to happen is our main component is our uh, spec itself. Within our spec, we will be putting guidelines into, uh, in there that will ensure that we get to that 45 days. So their biggest thing is, is when they submit, um, they have to ensure that it meets that guideline. And if they don't meet it, we, have, of course, we always ask for bonds and everything like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we're in it within a year and then we realize, okay, they said it's going to give us 45 days and it gives us 55 or we've only gained five days at which point we can go and say hey it's either you improve your uh your technology itself or we're going after your bond itself and we're going to find another uh technology or something to uh basically offset the cost to get that 45 day or to increase our capacity of a similar nature okay and, and, and then you've got a, a timeline of end of 2022 to have all of that equipment everything in place and working by the end of, of next year. Yes. Okay. That is uh, assuming that you know date the date. Uh, sorry, the dates that Alberta Environment provided us, they follow with that. Uh, again, Alberta Environment sometimes they take three months and they might take six months. That will push our date. But right now we did leave a little bit of leeway in there to yeah. make sure that we get done by the 2022. For sure. But uh, Alberta Environment sometimes is a dark horse and they're very unpredictable, unfortunately. Okay. That's all I had. Great, Councillor Knight. Oh, on that Munson over, that top over, is that all five blocks or is that? Yes. So from limit all the way down? Yes. Okay. Uh, second question, so that, is there something on the go with the Strathcona part there across from the school? Is that on our radar at all? Uh, the Strathcona one, I believe uh, that was discussed. It's within, if I'm, I have a capital list that I've created for the 10 year. I believe it's in the one and five year okay. plan itself. Yes. Councillor Pernelson. I'm good, Mike. Ask my question for me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I do have um, just a couple on the months and overlay, just to confirm, Mustafa, um, our grant application through the municipal stimulus program has been confirmed for approved? Yes, it has. For $401,421? Yes, it has. Okay, great. That's good. And what is the total, just to, as a reminder, what was the total cost of that project? I want to say it was 461,000 and change on that. And, and that's the total cost, cost for the months and overlay? Uh, that's the construction component. And then the engineering was roughly around that 40 mark. 40,000? Yes. Okay, so it'll come on in under 500,000 or It'd so. be around that 500,000 okay. mark, yes. So the, almost 90% of that is being paid for by the grant? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so within that itself, there is a 10% contingency built in. So we're hoping to be under that $500,000 when it comes down to it. Great news. And then on the 60 day cell, um, you're still looking at applying for the water for life or some of those other grants that may be available for that? Yes, we are uh, in discussion to try to see which uh, grants we can apply for. Uh, some of the things that we have looked at, they have specific sp uh, stipulations on what kind of technology you can use. Uh, so we are investigating that a little further to figure out what the best grant is to apply for. And we are going to be applying for any and every grant that we possibly can. Awesome. I love that. Any other questions for Mustafa? Hmm? There was one grant that had a debate that we had to apply in November. Is that Nope. I would well, It was a GIS one. So you're going to Uh no, so we have had the discussion. Right now, when it comes to the GIS itself, uh based on the schedule that I have, uh I'm hoping to have that completed by the end of September. 
Excellent. Well, thanks, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if we can have uh, Fire Chief Ben Niven Deputy or Merrill. Deputy Mayor Harris, uh, due to a scheduling conflict, uh, Ben's actually on holidays. He's not able to make it as he's going through a bit of a job change. So he's taking holidays when he can get it. So if you like, I can read his report um, for him or I can ask him to come to the July 20th meeting. I think if we can just uh, read it and, okay. and then if we have any really big questions, we can um, maybe get uh, Lindsay to send them to Ben and he can email us. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So within Ben's report, um, I'm going to note a few of the projects. So uh, there's uh, under one of the projects is a new truck. So they're looking to replace engine 155 and the milestone would be July 2022. Uh, he's provided uh, information where the 1998 fire truck is in need of replacement. They're working on two options to lease or to purchase. Uh, we as a department need to update trucks at about the 25 year mark. Or to maintain the ULC certification. I don't know what that acronym stands for. Engine 155 is coming to the 25 year mark in the next couple uh, months, I believe, and we should be looking to replace it. And following that, the next truck for replacement would be the fire rescue vehicle and then the aerial truck. The pickup trucks, uh, they will be looking at updating them over the next couple of years as they're starting to cost more money likely for maintenance. Uh, their daytime response, um, they're keeping the daytime sign-up shifts continuous. He mentions here daytime programs, having two people um, at the fire hall to respond to calls and keep the others at work unless there's a fire or a motor vehicle collision. And uh, they're happy to have those people on staff because they always have coverage. Uh, the training grounds, they're working at updating the training grounds for training. The milestone is July 2022. Uh, they're looking at completing this so they can offer courses and meet provincial requirements for live fire training. Uh, he mentions that it's still a work in progress and they're working on this and they use volunteer hours and bottle drive money. Excellent. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Councillor Knight. No. Um, I Councillor think we would Cornelson. need the explanation on where we would save the cost between the lease and the purchasing. So I think Ben would be better to explain yeah. that. And, and that yes. yes. And I was just going to say yeah. that'll come up in budget discussions. Yeah. Councillor Gustafson. Yeah. So that, that, that was one of the questions I, because there is no cost in here mm -hmm. to, to be able to bring that to Council's attention. And uh, I guess going forward, maybe just a recommendation for the fire hall itself, uh, not just directed at Ben, uh, just to be coming up with a very good, you know, include into the 10 year capital budget here, uh, their needs as well. And uh, uh, so. Okay, so yeah, I guess going forward that we need a, you know, a good outlook on their needs 10 years down the road. Um, and, uh, you know, another question would be for Ben is, is what do we do with the old assets? You know, I guess we sell them off. Do they go to an auction? Do they get sold privately? What, what, what happens to them to kind of, they go to auction? Yeah, so, so are we getting the biggest bang for our buck? Uh, with those assets, um, you know, I know they're de depreciated down, and so I think it'd be better to request to have him at the next meeting <laughs> to answer the question. But yeah, um, um, yeah, yeah. actually, right? Like we'll be sitting down a long-term. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my comment. Um, is just a suggestion that this report with all the supporting documents, uh, the money that's being requested uh, be put into the budget process and that um, not only just the fire department, but other departments show the justification for their requests during that process as well. 
And then secondly, um, along the lines of what Councillor Gustafson is saying as well, does the fire department have an asset management plan for their equipment? And does that align with the 10 year capital budget? So from previous discussions, there was supposed to be but there's we're working on going forward. So yeah, it will be working on when he gets back to the Thank you, Lori. And I think the reality on this one is we won't be able to replace all of those things all in the same year. So we're going to have to spread it out because we do. Yeah. Be, yeah. We're going to have to spread it out over time um, because that's not the only projects or the only thing we will be funding in a year. Okay. That is it for administration reports I, I yes my report will follow after can we do a motion on this or do we yes. want to wait for okay we ask for a motion to accept. excellent can i get a motion to accept the department updates i'll make the motion to accept the uh, updates for information all in favor Good. okay business arising from minutes um 5.1 administration follow up on 314 pure. Uh, we have moved that one off the agenda for a further date. So we're, we're not going to address that one. And then June 15th, 2021 utility arrears penalties. Lori. Okay, so in May 2020, motion 162 um, waived utility penal penalties for the May business. Um, the penalties were not charged at any time after March 2020. Um, December 2020, a motion 326 2020 waived the utility penalties until further notice. In June 2021, motion 166 2021, table utility arrear penalties for July the 6th. So, Option one, continue to waive utility penalties for the remaining six months of 2021. So the loss of revenue from January to June is $15,000. The loss of additional revenue from July to December rounded would be another $15,000. The total estimated loss of revenue for 2021, close to 30,000. And from 2020 and 2021, we're close to $55,000 loss of revenue. Option two, um, effective July 2021 billing, reinstate the utility penalties, which means we would get additional revenues of about $15,000. And I think we've had a decrease in utilities themselves and utility revenue. So from 2019 to 2020, we lost $190,000 in utility revenue itself. And so far this year, going on six months, we will be a little bit low as well. So my recommendation would be to um, put the penalties back on starting the effect of July billing. Any questions for Lori? When you say we've lost 190,000 in utilities, can in you allow Utilities that? revenue. Yeah. So water, sewer, garbage from 2019, comparing it to 2020 with COVID, there was a loss of 100. $90,000 in revenue. Because of waiving the penalties or because? No, there's just revenue itself. So the utility revenue decreased by 190000 So usage of utilities. Usage of utilities decreased by 190000 So I think with the combination of losing that revenue and losing the penalty revenue, I know it's only $15,000, but I think I can't pick any one name because I have about six pages of names. And after two months, the penalties get transferred or after two billing cycles, sorry, the penalties get transferred to taxes. So I know that there are some cases where people have tips and they just put that utility, get it transferred over to taxes and pay it through taxes. I know that some people are paying late, not a lot, but there is people paying late past the first period. So it's whether... We want to continue the $15,000 loss of revenue or get a little bit back what, for the rest of this year. What is our total revenue of the utilities? Like, 
we were saying we're 190,000 less. From 2019. Yeah. So how much is a traditional year? A typical? So 2019, we were at 2.6 million yeah. utilities. Um, last year, we were at 2.36. And currently, we we're only at um, 991,000. So if we continue okay, along so that line, we're still going to be a little bit under what we would normally be in a normal year. I mean, they are improving a little bit, but not enough to get us back that loss of revenue. Okay. Any other questions for Lori? I have a question for Lori. Yep. <clears throat> Do we kind of track on or track where we saw the decrease in revenue? Was it was it uh, was it water usage or was it? Um, I have it on my file. I just don't have yeah, it with me, so I'll have to get back to you. Okay. I do have it because I yeah. had to present it to not it, present it. I had to report it to um, the government for the most. It'd grant. be interesting to see where the decrease was really. I do have it split between water, sewer, and water, garbage. sewer, and garbage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me curious if you could just send us an email sure. to follow up on that. Yeah. I can do that. Does anybody want to make a motion? Either to accept staff's recommendation or not to accept it. I'll make that motion to accept administration's uh, request to uh, reinstate the utility pending lease effective mm -hmm. July 2021. Excellent. Any further discussion on that motion? I think it's important to talk about the percentage of the number we're talking about here. It's 99.5%. It's 0.5% of our revenue that we're out on the six months. So I don't think it's a huge number either way. I don't think it, it do you, if you were to guess the number of people that, that's impacted, Laura, do you have any idea? Like, is it a hundred citizens? Is it five citizens? Is it? Well, I have one, two, three. I, I think maybe the question five, would, five and a half would, pages. would be, is it the same? Well, and see, I'd have to go back and look at every billing. I know what you're saying. Absolutely. I'd have to go back and look at every billing just because it gets transferred to utilities, right? Or to taxes, anything outside of that two period billing cycle. So I'd have to go back and it would be more than a but where couple getting, hours. But where I was getting at, were they delinquent before COVID hit? Is it, like, is it a pattern? It, absolutely. Yeah. Some of them are. Some yeah. of them are still delinquent. So. Like you tend to have two or three of them that are the constant delinquent ones. And, 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 and that's unfortunate that they they either do it by choice or not by choice. Yes. And, and that's unfortunate. But uh, I, I would still, hey, the rules are the rules and, and you know, we all have to try to live by them. So, Well, and you can't live for free. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. I, you know, things are starting to come back around. I think yeah. that I would uh, support the motion. Uh, so any further questions? I'm in favor of. Okay, uh, let's uh, all in favor. Aye. Carried. Thanks, Lori. Thanks. Okay, May 18th, 2021, Railway Street Parking Loading Zone, Mustafa. Deputy Mayor Harris. Yes. Just to let council know, we do have a representative from Big Bear's Liquor Den um, attending the meeting as well, should you have any questions for them. Thank you. And we also have uh, Ben Heisler from Stantec as well. So, uh, so uh, in uh, May 18th, 2021, council meeting itself, council directed administration to look at the loading zone uh, in regards to uh, safety and convenience for the business itself. So administration, along with Stantec, we conduct a, a uh, alley churning movement uh, assessment. Uh, that assessment was attached to the report. Basically, uh, what we looked at was a heavy single unit commercial truck. Uh, that is basically the design vehicle that was utilized for the downtown and the side streets itself. So based on that, we did a traf uh, traffic movement assessment. And the traffic movement assessment basically indicated that uh, uh, vehicles of that nature can make that movement uh, with ease itself. Additionally, we also looked at an alternative uh, for the liquor store and the alternative was basically to uh, install a concrete pad across the street. Um, so with that itself, you know, we feel like that's a, a valid option as well, but there are some things that we do need to consider when it comes down to that option. Uh, first of all, uh, the property across the street is owned by a third party. 
So the owner would need to get written permission and an agreement with uh, that property owner. And again, the longevity of it comes into question because if the property owner does sell that property, will then the next owner allow that to occur? Uh, the second uh, component of it is uh, as well that it suits for loading and unloading, but there is a uh, safety risk as well as a possibility of the infrastructure being uh, damage just because we have an entrance and then we have the wheelchair ramps. Uh, one thing that we have known it, noticed, uh, especially in the last year itself, is uh, some people aren't paying attention and they are driving into the wheelchair ramps thinking that they're accesses. So that's where the whole safety concern comes to the public, as well as where the damage to the infrastructure comes in because uh, how we build the accesses are a lot different than how we would build a wheelchair ramp and accesses, accesses are typically reinforced with steel, which prevents it from cracking and everything like that. Um, as well, there might be some minor traffic interruptions by taking it back and forward. Um, we did a rough estimate of what it'll cost. We were around $7,500. Uh, it was uh, $5,700 for a two meter by five meter concrete pad and $1,800 for the inspections, materials and testing. So considering the cost risks uh, noted above, uh, administration and Stantec both recommend that we utilize the back alley for the, of the arches for loading and unloading. Um, so again, the pros of actually utilizing the back alley itself. Uh, so itself, it's, there's no adjustments that's required. There's no additional cost. The design vehicle should make the maneuver with ease. As well, there is very low risk to vehicles and pedestrian. Uh, on the other side, the business owner will not be pleased with that decision itself. Uh, option two with the concrete pad, um, there'll be minor, you know, pros are minor traffic interruptions, uh, very low risk to uh, vehicles and pedestrians. While there is the risk, uh, one thing we would recommend if we do that is being uh, putting bollards where the pedestrian uh, crosswalk is. Again, that will have to be uh, discussed with the, the individuals that are loading it that we're not putting it in a place that impacts that maneuver. So uh, that discussion would also need to be had. Um, as well, some of the cons itself is that proposed parking area itself is owned by a third party. Safety is one of the biggest things that do come to mind, uh, especially if uh, people see that concrete pad, they might think it's a road or something and they'll drive over where the wheelchair ramp is. Uh, possible damage to infrastructure and the cost that will be incurred to the business owner. Uh, so with this component where we're installing the concrete pad, we are, administration is recommending that the cost be incurred by the property owner just because it's unfair to burden the taxpayers with a uh, upgrade that would uh, impact, uh, that would affect the businesses itself. Um, yes, and so that is uh, our recommendation is to basically proceed uh, with the alley behind the arches for loading and unloading. And we are happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Excellent, so questions for Mustafa and then we'll hear from um, Big Bear. Councillor Fernelton. Nope. I think uh, Councillor Gustafson. I know this is a very so, tough one. Um, <clears throat> we hate to impact businesses, but originally when the arches were built, the intention for the loading and, and off or the loading zone was in the alley and not on the street itself. That, that loading zone was for, um, for actually cars themselves, like you know, for passenger vehicles and not uh, heavy trucks. Um, I, I wish I could give any you know, better suggestions for this. I don't, I don't know if it's more of a, it's, it's more of a comment than, than, a, than a question, but uh, you know, that's kind of how I feel is, I wish I could give a better uh, suggestion, but I, I can't at this time. And if I may add, uh, the one question that was brought up at the last meeting itself was the comment that uh, the, there was no communication in regards to the open houses, to the business <coughs> owners and everything like that. So we went back, uh, went back and checked our records to see if the emails and everything were sent out. Um, the uh, emails that we've been in contact with Big Bear liquor store, they were on the list as well. I confirmed with Christina when we did the walk around that they did actually visit that business itself. So in regards to the communication component to ensure that we got as much feedback as possible, um, 
from an administration's perspective, we did everything possible to try to get the feedback. Thanks, Mustafa. Councilor Knight. On your little diagram here, is that actually spec'd out to a certain size truck, or did you come up with that? Is, was that like the scale or anything like that that figured out a turn radius, or is that yeah. just for more? I'm just curious to know what you kind of measure that out off of. For sure. So that's basically uh, it's a heavy single unit commercial truck, yeah. and that's the that's the basically the design vehicle that's set out by the uh, uh, I got the association here, it's the Canadian Association of Traffic, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, so it is it's a design spec itself when we design stuff. So there are specific vehicles that we have to design for. Typically, yep. we look at fire trucks because fire trucks usually have the worst turning radius. Um, so for the purpose of this, we used a commercial vehicle to ensure that the commercial vehicles that are coming into it can make that maneuver. And no idea how, well, how long that commercial vehicle is? Um, this back up? So it's, it's considered a heavy single unit and that's typically what those ones with the trailers are considered based on my understanding. So we basically spec'd out what that truck is that's coming into that area itself. Would that be 30 feet, 40 feet? 35 feet, Justin. I, I would say this is a regular tractor. The way that I look at it, it's a, it's a tractor trailer with like a, a 40 or a 40, 45 foot highway map mm -hmm. is, is, is what it looks like. For sure. Um, ben, uh, do you know the exact detail of that? I don't off the top of my head. It is equivalent to your like very largest moving vans. Um, you know, as long as they get basically, uh, it is bigger than the, the fire truck. So we did use it for a larger than typical standard. Um, but I can pull the dimensions um, for you, and I'll see if I can figure that out as we're chatting. If not, we stop. I'll email it to you afterwards. Um, it is standardized stuff. I just need to pull it up. Okay, the so for trailer is a fifty-three foot van. That is the standard highway trailer. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. sorry. That was a big bear. That was Barry from Big Bear. The standard. Okay, thank you, Barry. Yeah, the, the um, confirm the heavy curious. single. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I'm just curious. Um, Barry says they have 53 footers. <coughs> Is what you did uh, comparison to equal to the size that Big Bear uses? I'm going to direct that question to Ben. So if, Ben, do you have that spec up there? I don't have it um, just yet. I will check. I assume it probably is smaller than the 53 footer. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the 53 foot is uh, like a full semi truck, uh, like a yeah. tractor trailer unit. Yeah, so that is larger than the heavy single unit uh, trailer for sure. Um, it wouldn't be common in any urban area or municipal setting to expect that a tr semi truck, a full size semi truck, can navigate side streets and alleyways. Uh, that's not ever typically designed within industry standards. It would have to be an exception, um, not a, a standard. And that was not something that was brought up as a requirement to really in the project design parameters. Okay. I just have a uh, more of a comment. I think that safety is always at top of mind and our number one priority. I'm, I don't think that loading from the street is an option. I would prefer one of these uh, two options and uh, my preference would be um, from the alleyway or uh, the other option would be secondary, but uh, my preference on the second option two would be that uh, both parties, the landowner and the business work together to come to a conclusion or consensus there and work together on that. Um, any other questions or comments? I, I do have on, on your diagram, Sarah Mustafa. Yep. Um, the first one, so the, the truck, how does it access Smith? Does it come from the north or does it come from the south? So, and, and did you plan on a turning radius on the jut out and the uh, opposing traffic heading eastbound? So uh, we didn't look at the turning maneuver for, from railway itself because uh, based on what has been told, they've been able to make that turn itself. So that wasn't really looked at. Yep. Um, we basically, uh, the trucks would come from railway onto Smith Avenue itself and then they would turn into the alley. 
from the, either direction, either north or either northbound or south. Uh, it was looked from uh, they were coming in from the east direction, going west. That's fine, but which way were they? Which way was the nose pointing? It would be pointing south. Okay. Yeah, and it will it would exit the alleyway going. Uh, it'll turn left on Gray Avenue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, I, I get that. The trucks always come from the south. They always come from the south. Correct. They don't come from uh, the from from the other entrance. So for the large truck, they are coming from the south. For the five tons, they could come from either direction. Yeah, but the five tons are, are not in in issue. So those five tons, um, my question is, how often do you get those versus the uh, the, the other, the, the highway tractors? So the five tons, uh, we get two trucks once a week, um, sometimes three depending on ice, and the semi truck is one on Tuesday and one on Friday. So uh, there's guaranteed two five tons on a Tuesday and one semi on a Tuesday and then the other semi on Friday. So it's, it's really the semi, it's, it's not the body jobs that, that are the issue. No, the body jobs are easy to deal with. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no any questions just yet, um, I think I would just like to hear from Barry from Big Ben. Um, so Barry, if you have any comments or, or questions at this time, feel free to ask them or, or make comment. So I went and, and did a bunch of work there this morning, uh, actually ran into Mustafa while I was out there uh, trying to figure out how to make this work um, as far as utilizing the alley. Um, because I think that is a far smarter option than going across the street. Uh, there's too many safety implications with trying to cross the railway on a Friday afternoon uh, when you're moving pallets of very easily damaged product. So what we, what we looked at and what we figured out was if we poured an extra 10 feet of concrete um, just to the east, or sorry, the west side of our current loading doors, that would allow us the moment required to get ourselves uh, completely off the street, utilizing the back alley so that we could get stuff in the door. So uh, we want to make every effort to work with council to, to try and get this result. And we figure that we could pull it off this way as long as the town is willing to give us a letter stating that the, uh, the current sidewalk is capable and available to handle those loads and take us off the street entirely. I, I have a question. Uh, so is that taking part of the, the uh, where the grass is at right now? Okay. Yeah. So basically enlarging the sidewalk so you can maneuver the loads into your double doors. For sure. yeah. is, so it would be 10 feet to the west of the current uh, rolled where the rolled curve rolled curb sorry uh, is so we would need approximately 10 feet for maneuvering uh, if we were able to put concrete in there uh, right out to the actual curb which would result in the removal of one tree and a little bit of sod and then I firmly believe we could pull it off uh, the sidewalk is a smidge narrow uh, for winter. For summer, it's fine, but for winter, once we get snow piled in there, it'll be uh, a little bit more of an issue, but that's why God invented snow blowers, and I have one. So, if I may ask a question. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so sorry, you said 10 feet. Are we talking 10 feet from the current sidewalk being added on there or 10 feet from the door? Uh, 10 feet from the door. So basically uh, two sections to the west. So if, if we went to make it even with two uh, divisions on the current sidewalk, 
that comes to, I think, nine foot 10 or some darn thing. I'm sorry, I looked at so many numbers today. My math skills are a little off. Um, but I feel that if we if we went with that extra 10 feet, then it would it would make a world of difference and it would we would be able to go through that area with ease. Uh, once the repairs are done by by the current contractor doing all the upgrades in town, um, I see they've got a little bit of cement to pour yet right beside the building. Uh, that would allow us to move the recycle bin and the garbage bin closer to the building, which would give us more room to, to make that turning moment with that 53-foot uh, trailer. So, But those repairs do need to be completed in order to perform that maneuver so that we can get those bins out of the way. Sorry, Ben. Uh, Ben, can I ask you to check uh, what uh, the width is right now? Uh, I know you have your computer in front of you. If you could pull up that area and check what the width is from the door to uh, the edge of pavement right now, uh, sorry, to the edge of the sidewalk, I believe it is 10 feet, if I remember correctly, but I want you to double confirm that. I will pull it up, yeah. You just give me a couple of minutes. Right. Sorry, your width on what? On, on, on the sidewalk, the width of the sidewalk is four feet currently. So with the, and the, the area of the grass between the sidewalk and the curb is an additional four foot. So if we could go four feet wide, 10 feet long to the west of that door, uh, I think we can pull it off. So it's just- so if, if I may add on to that, so that will in, include us basically ripping out uh, the existing curb that's there. So we would have to move the existing curb about two feet. Can, nope. Based on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all you have to do is install some dirt and pour some concrete. That's it. Take the grass up, pour the concrete in. No curb. Don't even touch the curb, right, Barry? Yep, the curb stays intact. We don't have to touch any of it. We just have to tear out a little bit of grass in one tree. And Bob's your uncle. Kate, Councillor Gustafson, you had. If I may, Madam Chair. You may. <laughs> um, would we be able to direct administration to further uh, a conversation um, uh, after you know the, the the council meeting with uh, the owners of uh, the big uh, there's den to uh, bring another report back? To, I hate to, to push it no, back another couple of weeks, but maybe we. If we have to have a special meeting to to approve this or or or, or look at it, um, work with Barry on on the, his exact uh, proposal and bring that back to council. I don't think we need a motion on that. We just need a direction from the administration. Um, so for any direction, we would require a motion, a motion. please. Okay. Okay, I'll make that motion to uh, to direct administration mm -hmm. to work with uh, Bears Den. Sure. To, uh, to, to look at the solution uh, proposed by the business owner. Okay, discussion on the motion? No. Sounds good. Okay, I think that um, a good solution is always to, to work with the business owner. And if they've come up with a solution that's going to work and it's not going to cost either party a lot of money, I would uh, be in favor of that. So... If there's no further questions on that motion, um, all in favor? Motion carried. Perfect. The uh, the one comment that I would like to make to go to go along with that is that gets us 100% off the street, and then when winter rolls around, we don't have to worry about that street being down to bare pavement because it's easy to keep up a sidewalk. Sometimes not so much on a road. Yeah, thank you, Barry. Thank you so much for your consideration, folks. I sure appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Barry. Thanks, Mustafa. Thank you. I think I'm next again. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah you're up again. So you might as well just go ahead and talk about the railway street sign on the south Perfect. end of railway. Okay. So um, basically, ad uh, administration was directed by council to look at the sidelines on Ross, uh, 
for the churning of either direction. So the concern that was expressed was uh, the location and the size of the future side is blocking the sight lines of traffic itself. So based on this, uh, we did a, uh, we looked at the technical design requirements itself uh, and based on the Transportation Association of Canada, um, it meets the technical requirements. We also conducted some uh, reviews of the site and did some test runs. Uh, basically, what we did was try to see how we can improve on the sight lines and stuff like that. Based on that, uh, we did uh, come up with a couple solutions on how to alter these uh, sight lines, as well as basically the, adjust the stop bars and the cross bars a little smaller. So the impact when it comes to the maneuver for the pedestrian is minimal, but it does increase the um, pedestrian's uh, ability to move around, but it also increases the sight line for the driver itself. Um, so the goal was to have this report there before we painted, but unfortunately we did already paint and the decision that we did make at that time was to make those adjustments because we felt that the impact on the pedestrian wasn't significant enough or as well it didn't impact their safety in any way to make those changes. So right now, based on how the layout of that is, uh, the, the crosswalks itself are a little smaller. Uh, it, for someone that's not paying attention, it's not noticeable. And we've kind of improved uh, the center line and everything like that to kind of help that out. Uh, as well on that, we also conducted the, uh, an updated uh, sideline triangle. Uh, so three figures were attached to the document itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn that over to Ben. Uh, ben, if you wanna discuss the sidelines based on the re-diagrams that were presented. Yes, absolutely. I can provide a, a brief overview. Uh, Mustafa, please do let me know if I'm getting too technical. I have a tendency to go down the rabbit hole on these sometimes. Um, but you'll see the three figures. Um, the option one, which was labeled uh, current site triangle, that was the original design. Um, as Mustafa mentioned, this is, is no longer the circumstance uh, with the recent paving and the line paint. Um, the update is actually very similar to option number two right now. Uh, but for just Brief understanding, the green triangle is what's the, the technical site triangle requirement um, as per the, the TAC association. And you can see that the site triangle is clear, uh, which means that it technically meets the requirements based on the design speed and a number of other measurements uh, that get done. So this is a pretty typical application um, for all intersections get checked like this. Uh, and then we you know, dove into it and said, well, it meets the technical requirements. Um, these complaints are being generated and certainly public safety is paramount. So we do need to look into it a little bit further. And that's where the uh, kind of yellowy orange triangle we, we drew out. And you can see if the car was stopped at where the stop bar was, and then two meters back from the stop bar is roughly where the driver's eye sight line would be. And so you, we would check that if the, the vehicle stopped at the stop bar, uh, then certainly they can't see as far down um, now, again, a technical guideline um, is irrelevant of where the stop bar is because inherently people stop and then they creep forward before they advance onto the adjacent roadway. Uh, but that certainly did give a, a brief indication of, you know, what people were witnessing. Um, and you've driven it, I've driven it, um, you can see where those challenges have come up. And uh, we decided that narrowing the crosswalk and then tightening up the stop bar as represented in option number two, uh, was a great option to get the sight line from the stop bar a little bit closer. And so that's what's out there right now. You can drive the area to see if you feel that it is a lot better. And then the third alternative was to eliminate the crosswalk marking altogether and bring the stop bar even closer forward. In that case, you kind of compromise the pedestrian environment. Uh, people will be stopping where the pedestrians would cross. Uh, however, the location here um, has a little bit less pedestrian volume than the remainder of downtown. Previously, we did put a high priority on making sure that the pedestrian crosswalks were quite, quite wide because of the large pedestrian volume going up and down the west side of the street. Um, of course, that's the main commercial corridor, uh, but down in this south section, the uh, foot activity is a little bit less than the main commercial area. So we thought that option number two was likely the best option to move forward with, but certainly if you feel that the vehicular site triangle is even more important um, at a bit of a compromise to the pedestrian uh, accommodation, you could black out the crosswalk altogether and move that stop bar even further forward. So that is an option at the community's disposal. 
Um, I think that uh, professionally, option number two is the best option. And uh, since it's out there already, it'd probably be good to give it a try and see if people feel that that's acceptable. Um, but if not, we could certainly uh, look at alternative number three, um, or we could find the iterative or uh, you know sub option of blending two different pieces together if there's something that you'd like to see as well. So it's uh, at the community's discretion, but that is the technical background. Uh, and what we noticed was the truck was not in any of the lanes of traffic itself. So it was still staying within the boundaries and it achieved better than what the sidelines were when they creeped over. Okay. So that's one thing we did look at is we, we tended to use uh, bigger SUVs and we used a full truck, uh, an F-150 to basically see how far is it coming up and is it getting into the lanes that really impact them. Um, and one thing we did notice is that it, with the F-150 that we used, uh, they were still able to maintain, I guess, where the curb line is because we have the bump outs. Yeah. So vehicles cannot really uh, come into it because they'll be hitting the curb. But I guess if somebody swings, they could probably hit you. But 
within the two curbs where they're set, you're still able, the vehicles are not going to hit them technically. Well, and when the tarp comes off, that might help as well because you can actually see through yes. the sign. Right now, it's just a big blue block. <laughs> that tarp is going to yeah. come down tomorrow. <laughs> I will get that down tomorrow. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> I, I next? Go next, yeah. Next. <laughs> So I always like to question engineers and, and, and the, way, the way that they think about things. So uh, in, your, in your triangle, did, they, did you think about, I'm not saying you, I'm not no, directing sure. it to you, I'm directing it to, to this, is about the parked cars that could possibly be there and obscuring the view, as well as the fence that, Mm -hmm. obscures the view quite yeah. a bit as well so that's just a comment i don't need a, uh, i don't need a reaction or or, a, um, or if, i just it's just more of an observation yeah. because you're looking through i know a lot, not a lot of people park this far downtown yes but it is designated parking down there and that could really obscure for sure even more so if I may add on to that, um, yes. so what we did was we did a comparison, um, and correct me if I'm wrong on here, Ben, but we did a comparison with the uh, different access points within Railway Street. Mm -hmm. So we looked at Smith, Nanton, and all those other areas, uh, and we compared sight lines. So when vehicles are parked in every single one of those slots, technically speaking, uh, this area, and again, technically <laughs> speaking, <laughs> I can only go based on what the technical standard says. The sight line on Ross is better than any other any of the other side streets. So, and, and then one thing that I actually just before the meeting, I went out and I walked and I stood in the middle of the road. Probably shouldn't have stood in the middle of the road. I was pretending I was a vehicle. Well, <laughs> and and it's it's actually the building's sign as well. Their temporary sign that obscures quite a bit of the view as well. So mm. Maybe that if we can maybe get that relocated somewhere, we can ask our landlord to. to uh, we also looked right, at two cents. Yeah, no, uh, that that was one thing that came up, and that sign has been moved as of recently. Uh, yeah. But we will be asking the property owner to kind of move that, just because what I noticed, especially I believe that moved about two weeks ago, that did impact the site line itself. So it does. Yeah. That that was something that we were going to bring up to the property owner to move it. Uh, originally, that was a lot further behind, so we're going to ask them to move it uh, to an alternative location where it doesn't impact that site line itself. Councillor Knight. Uh, in your reviewing of this, do you have Trevor's input at all in terms of stop signs, turning, any questions like that from the peace officer? I did not. So it was based, uh, we looked at it strictly from a engineering and a safety perspective. So what it was, it was myself and we had the uh, contractor out there as well as the senior uh, construction manager from Stantec out there doing this. Do we think there's value in having Trevor address any of the concerns if he thinks there's a concern? Um, how I would answer that, and uh, I would say it's we have a standard that we kind of have to follow. Um, the other alternative is really to move that sign, right? Uh, when it comes down to it, there is nothing else that we can realistically, it's either, aside from what we've done right now, is <coughs> we either fully remove that sign and put it somewhere else, or we basically get rid of that crosswalk, which basically impacts the um, pedestrians' uh, walkability and their safety itself, because vehicles can park anywhere. Uh, we looked at the option of moving the sign, and some of the costs we were getting were around the 50K, because we have to basically remove all the concrete that's there for the new concrete. We have to fill that area back up. And we just felt at this time, based on what our budgets look like, that that wasn't really a feasible option. And mm, yeah, so we did look at that option itself. Who, who holds the ownership to where that sign is on the plans? Like that was done by the electrical, like by the engineer design plans. Like someone should have ownership where that sign is from the site line, shouldn't they? Sorry, I, I don't think I understand that question quite correctly. So whoever rubber stamped the paper where that sign would be and the roads are and the curbs, yeah. is there not accountability to the people that have put that on paper right there to where that is? Like, I don't know. If, I don't think that's an us problem. I think that's a person who's engineered the plans and put it in a paper where that actually is, and it's proven to be a problem. I don't think that should be a town incurred cost, but I think the sign should move. So when it comes down to it, uh, like I said, we go based on what standards say. Um, we have to follow what the standards are. 
uh, based on what the standards are, we meet the standard. And the individual that stamp the drawings, uh, they have to follow the standards, right? Uh, so based on what the standards state right now, it meets the sideline requirements even originally. So I know it's not the answer we want to hear, but it meets the standard that's required. Okay. I, it's, it's not a great answer, but I, I don't think our peace officer would agree with that meets the standard. That's okay. Continue. Um, so I have just a couple of comments. If you're done, Councillor Knight, I am in. you're okay. All right. Um, sometimes paper looks pretty good, but when you actually put it up and it's been tried, it just simply doesn't work. And I feel that this sign, I've been there by there several times, as have uh, all of the other councillors, staff, and other residents. And I would have to agree with Councillor Cornelson. I think that you are halfway out when you're turning left and quite a bit out when you're turning right, just to make sure that no one's coming, regardless of whether the tarp is up or not. Um, one of my questions is, I'm curious as to why that particular location was chosen opposed to closer to the end of the street. And same as the location down at the, the other way, like Main Street doesn't start here. Main Street really starts over here. For sure. So the locations were basically selected as uh, where would be the first point of entry where you would see a sign coming into a main stretch of road. Um, and at that time, we felt that these were the best locations itself, uh, based on the whole rail, the signs itself, it says railway street itself, railway street downtown. So it's basically also a signs indicating what the road is, right? So we felt uh, at that time when we had the uh, conversation with uh, the previous council, that downtown was the full stretch from mountain to lot, sorry, limit to lot. So, yes we're over here but the road starts over here yeah so we still need to keep it a certain we want it to be a certain distance from when somebody's driving in so when it came to the whole experience of driving in and seeing the sign uh you know if we have it right at the beginning we felt that it, you they weren't getting the full experience when it came down to it and that's why it was moved at that the location that was selected was based on the whole experience itself uh, i don't know do you have anything else to add on to that ben Uh, yeah, I can just echo your comments. I know there was discussions about putting it um, right down on lot and the approach from lot, since there's not a, um, a direct drive in, it's a, a turn around the corner. Uh, I think there's a lot of comments that it wasn't ever going to be seen by the people driving in since they're turning around the corner anyway. And also there would be some challenges with the property because uh, the sign, of course, needs to be located on the public right of way. And that bump out at that location uh, seemed opportune for that, as opposed to if you tried to put it um, down your lot, you would have had to uh, probably put it on the Cal Tire property. And then you know, you're looking at property acquisition and a number of other challenges as well. So um, what you had said, Mustafa, uh, coupled with the kind of inability to see it when you drive in on lot is what ultimately influenced that sign selection. And there was lots of input on it. Um, you know, from the public stakeholder, open houses, uh, council at the time, uh, everybody thought that this was uh, the, the best decision, all things considered. I'm going to kindly disagree with that. And um, my feelings are that there's no left-hand turn down there. Um, so I think that and would have been a better location for the sign, as well as, you know, no one's going to see what road it is, except for a puny little sign like this until you get down the block. And then that's when they say, oh, this is Railway Street. So to have it closer to Lout would have, I feel would have been better. And same as the location down there, you, you, you've already come in, um, you know, quite a few feet before you even see the sign. For sure. Um, 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 and well, we, we can talk about the wording of the sign another time, we won't get into that. But right now we're talking about um, I, I the safety of this one, yeah. and like I said, on paper, yeah. looks great, but in reality, it doesn't work, and we are going to have to do something. Fair enough. Um, I guess the one thing that Ben that pointed out that I kind of missed was the whole component of we have two lanes when it came down to uh, lot itself, right? So if we were to place this sign and move it near a lot, 
it will have to be on private property, which becomes a different uh, challenge itself because typically we don't want town assets on private property itself. So if we were to place it on lot itself, it'll be at the expense of losing a lane. Um, we all know that there's always negotiations and if you didn't ask the question, there's no negotiations. So I don't think that that would have been our only option is to have it down to one lane. Fair enough. Is um, it, sorry. Uh, okay. my, uh, Any other questions? <laughs> um, like, if, why can't we move it further? To I the was west, thinking that. Okay. Yeah, I know you, you could either move it that way, but and, and there's no way to move it this way because there's a sidewalk. Meryl, you have a comment? Uh, I just wanted to mention the reference of the peace officer was brought up, and I can tell you that um, never has the peace officer expressed that he's received feedback about safety. Mm -hmm. I can certainly follow up with him. Um, just, I know that there's no town boulevard as we go further south. Could one of the existing parking spots be considered as one of a location for the sign rather than on private property? Just because I don't know how much those parking, it's just an idea for discussion. Like to the, make a to the south? Like to the south, like the, fur, I don't know if the furthest one that's closest to Keltire will impede the traffic. Sight line turning left or right. I, I don't know. I don't know the engineering of it, but I don't know if that would be a solution. That would be a solution. It'd be an expensive solution. I know. Well, but or an idea. I, I, I know what you mean. Make a bit of a like a boulevard for the sign itself, and take away the very uh, south parking stall, which would leave one handicap, one, two, three other. As long as it wouldn't impede when the vision, come out the sight line parking. for yeah. turning traffic. Just an idea. I don't know if it's feasible. I don't know what the costs are. Just for a point of discussion. Yeah. And so I'm not sure um, that the options that are presented today are what council feels are a solution. But um, I might propose that staff come back with a couple other options with costs on what that looks like so that council can make. Um, an informed decision. Could we put it on wheels and try it out in some locations? Actually, no, see, just give it legs and lift it up. But. Yeah, let's let's put a big uh, couple of holes up and put it up on top. I don't know. Yep, no, we can look at that. So, okay, so um, can I have somebody make a motion on that? I'll make the motion. <laughs> okay, that staff comes back. Yeah, that staff comes back with further information on moving it with cost and how many options do we want as well we'll leave that up to we'll staff leave that up you. to you Ms. Yeah. <laughs> I will try to get it as soon as I a can. A little more than one would be good though. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Any Thank further you. discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. <clears throat> Ooh, bylaws, assessment review board bylaw. <laughs> Lindsay, Merrill. Lindsay, did you want me to talk about this? It doesn't matter. So as you know, it was in uh, 2019, we had our map review, which uh, map is the, um, Lindsay, what does the acronym map stand for? Municipal. Municipal assessment. So municipal affairs comes in and they review all of our bylaws, policies and everything. And um, through the assessment, um, let me just, I'll just read the statement here. An assessment review board bylaws are a requirement under the Municipal Government Act and was an action, um, action time as part of the map review conducted by Alberta Municipal Affairs. Alberta Municipal Affairs reviewed the bylaw that we have in place and requires changes to the current bylaw and have requested an amendment. So the changes to the bylaw are reflected in the new bylaw and Alberta Municipal Affairs recommends that our current bylaw be rescinded and that the new bylaw created 
with the create, uh, corrected information be adopted? So basically, when Miss Flood Affairs comes in, they do their assessment and they make some recommendations. And this is one of their recommendations that they made through the map. Through the review. Yeah, through the map review. And this is one of the ones that we had outstanding because we have cleaned up the majority of the request for municipal affairs. Okay. Uh, any questions on the proposed bylaw changes? Did you want to outline the changes? Did you read for, the changes? I read the changes. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I guess for, the, for, for public knowledge or for public so, record. Yeah, um, we'll have Merrill do Merrill, that. Maybe that might be better for Merrill. Yeah, yeah. So the bylaw was pro, uh, provided to the public for information, um, but I can highlight them quickly. So under section three, assessment review boards, there was a few things that was uh, removed. Um, speaking of um, uh, how many members it would consist of, uh, local assessment review boards um, consisting, sorry, it's hard to read the edits. Maybe I'll pass it on to Lynn. I can speak she to She edited the document. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I saw the Upon yeah. review, uh, municipal affairs review, we originally had two uh, local assessment review boards and then two composite assessment review boards um, consisting of different members. and. Municipal Affairs only wants one local assessment review board and one composite review board. So that's ultimately the only change is it's one board for each. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on the change? No. Nope. Does somebody want to make a motion that bylaw 2020-17 assessment review board bylaw be rescinded? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. And then the proposed second motion that bylaw 2020 108 assessment review board bylaws be given first reading. Anybody want to give the first reading? I'll do that. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> and then we'll do a second reading. Anybody want to? Make motion for second reading. Sure. <laughs> Mike, thank you. Some All in favor? For our time. Aye. And did you want us to do the third reading or are we waiting to do the third re reading? You can do them all today. You have to be um, bringing it forward for third and final reading and then third reading. Okay, well, we can do that at the next meeting, right? For the, yep, the for both of those? If that's what council chooses. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. That'll just be added to the, the next agenda. Correct? Yeah, Agent. and I'll just put a note that we just require third and final reading. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Paul, his annual budget policy, 2021-02. So I think that we're going to um, hear the presentation, but I think that council may have some questions. And we may be asking um, afterwards to bring it back. So I don't know if it's Lindsay or yourself, Meryl, that's presenting. Um, so I, I can uh, speak to it. Okay. So uh, Lindsay, Lori, and I met to work on the annual budget policy. As you can see, this is a draft. So some of the things that Lindsay added to the document was, uh, I believe, Lindsay, you added a few definitions that we didn't have. This is this is a brand new bylaw. This is oh, a brand policy. new bylaw. Yep. Sorry. Um, Lindsay, you speak to it. We, uh, we just uh, I, uh, surveyed other surrounding municipalities on their policies, um, sat down with Lori and Merrill, went, reviewed them, created a draft bylaw on um, what works for us and the processes that Lori wants to, to do with regard to um, the budget process and talking with managers and that. And this is the draft policy that we came up with based on, I believe there's some information that when the motion was made that council uh, requested as well um, with regards to, uh, you know, being approved by the end of December and reviewing it in, in September or starting review in July with the managers. 
Right, and so the bylaw speaks about the principles, the multi-year planning, a balanced budget, use of unpredictable revenues, user fees, license permit and fees, tax revenue, reserves. So we tried to implement everything in the bylaw that we felt uh, would be relevant while researching um, other communities. Excellent. Um, questions for Marilyn Lindsay. Councillor Knight. I defer. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, Councillor Cornelson. You'd be better at the questions pertaining to this one. <laughs> Councillor Gustafson. I, I, I think because uh, um, uh, uh, you and I, uh, Madam Chair, were on starting this, uh, mm -hmm. this bylaw, uh, to, to to make a, a, a good uh, procedure to to talk about our annual budget and and and, and develop a good policy. Um, I just have about the uh, um, um, the timeline on the sorry, I have to go back to it here shall approve the final budget by March 31st of each year with the interim budget accepted prior to the December 31st of each year. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, do, do we need, you know, we really should be having the, the you know, we, we can have an interim. Um, I I, I totally agree with that, and um, I think we have to be very clear with with the wording on that, on on what we're kind of waiting on, and and then I know that you can help out with maybe some uh, some wording there, Lori, on on that. Um, that's kind of what I was concerned that uh, you know we just don't willy nilly, and this is for for future councils, uh, not you know if I'm not here. Um, you know, going forward, but um, that, that it gives a clear direction that, hey, we need to get this budget done and, and, and maybe there's some things that we are waiting for, but, but we need to have a good capital and a, and a good operating budget done um, before the end of the year and, and not even leaving it to the last minute. So uh, that, that, were, that, that, that was always my concern. So, maybe one of the comments for and and maybe that can be worded into that is that possible lindsay <laughs> if, if that could be worded into uh some sort of wordsmith into into the the bylaw as well yeah. um i'll defer maybe the rest to you Sure. If, if you, if you so, yeah. manager. So uh, I had the same concern um, with item 3.6 with the budget to be um, an interim budget only by December 31st. And then the final budget by March 31st. I believe that we should be able to have more of a final budget by December 31st. Um, I'm just curious as to why March 31st was proposed to have the final budget. Uh, if you're having the assessments completed in January, um, could we make that a tighter, closer to January deadline? Uh, end of February? Well, because I have to have time to talk to the yeah. and most of his information generally takes the first day to make time balance. And is that the typical timing for assessments? Okay. And and may if if I may, why the date probably was picked is because that's in the MJ where that's the deadline, anyways. Is that correct? December thirty first is the deadline for at least an interim. No, for the interim, but for for a national budget for the, the actual budget. The MJ doesn't. It's not specific. It doesn't provide the specific end of the year date. So we tried to have the interim budget in place and then the final budget is 
particularly impossible. So maybe in the interim one we would have to make sure that we completed a completing operation. Yeah, yeah, by December 31st. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I think so. And then, if we could, Lori, um, bump it up to the end of February if you have time for that, that would be great as well. And then, I had um, just if we go to item 10 yeah. on the capital budget amendments and, and whatnot. Um, one of my biggest questions, again, and it's kind of been the theme for the night, is uh, where in here do we even say um, that capital projects have to be in that 10-year plan to be recognized in that budget year? Or something along that I read it above somewhere in the frame. Scene. I read a lot. So there was something about a 10-year thing in here. Nine point. Yeah, it's, it, it's in nine there. five. Nine point five. I'll read it for you if you like. Yeah, I see it. Fantastic. Nine point yeah. five under reserve speaks to the town will maintain capital and operating reserves in order to ensure a current and sufficient asset base to support town programs and services. Contributions to meet these resort reserves will be based on the ten-year rolling average for capital investment. Yeah, I just wanted, I think, maybe to speak to it in the capital budget amendments as, as well on the 10-year plan. What we don't want is a lot of these one-off capital projects to come, um, as they quite often do here, and not be thought of before. I know what you're saying as well. Yeah. Like it, it should be included into the list. Like I, I guess we, we're trying to think far enough ahead, but maybe if we're talking about <laughs> if it's in that tenure and it's it's uh, maybe yeah, needs to be bumped you, ahead yeah. or something like that. Yeah, once you start, once I yeah. start, right now there's nothing. That's right. So yeah. Once I start to build it, when we hit 2022 or 2023, the information that I'm getting for repairs or major projects yeah. would automatically be included. That's and right. Maybe the odd thing that comes up that, that is a surprise, that, that's always the odd thing, yes, but not. Are, are, are we able to put something in there, Lindsay, of, of, of you know, those really weird one-offs that, you know, we never thought of, that we never thought we'd need, but it just comes up as a capital project that, and maybe that covers it, but we need something for all, you know, full council approval, like just a lot of, a lot of checks and balances at a safety net for us to, to. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and I understand that, you know, some of that needs a little massaging and it's uh, a bit, it moves a bit um, where we would add some depending. More on, yeah. That's right. And then if we just um, move to Schedule A, Department's Budget Report, the information in there is good. But that information doesn't really give us the justification. And I know that you have detailed description of request, including the request, any background information, cost estimates and breakdown can be provided under separate cover, pictures, drawings and stuff. But this should really be not just um, a budget report, but a justification for that uh, capital project. And that's what that, that, that justification Yeah. I, I think so. Just make it a little bit clear. And, and then as well, um, make it really clear to when, you know, capital projects, one thing, but what's the justification for staff request, the new staff request or, or whatnot. Okay. And I think that's all I had. I think other than that, really good job. I think it's uh, way better than what we had, was, which was nothing. Yeah. Meryl. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I, I didn't 
do this in the beginning when we presented it, but if I may, I'd like to read the purpose of this bylaw, which really gives the background of what yes, we're developing. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So the purpose of this bylaw was to establish principles and guidelines for the preparation of annual budgets and unbudgeted expenditures. It will also ensure effective means to deliver services to citizens and enforce accountability for the proper and prudent management of public funds. So again, this was all about accountability, that this was council's mandate, and that's what this draft is. Yes. Thank you, Meryl. You're welcome. Absolutely. So um, can I have a motion from someone to table this and for staff to bring it back with some changes? So moved. Any discussion, questions? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Thanks for your work on that, Lindsay. Yes, this is a great, uh, great step forward for, for what we needed, so. Yeah, absolutely. I think just a, a couple little tweaks and then it should, mm -hmm. be, should be good to go. Okay, item 8.1. 2021 municipal election special ballots and advanced vote as per section 7326 of the local authorities election act council may by resolution provide an advanced vote who's presenting this one i can okay thanks Fine. lindsay My computer shut down on me um, okay so um, in 2018, after the last general election, um, uh, one of the councillors uh, made a motion to provide for special ballots, and that's for um, electors who are unable to vote at an advance vote or at a voting station on election day. Um, during the 2017 uh, election and even previous ones, we've never used mail-in ballots or special ballots. Um, and this year, this election is going to be uh, a lot more work. We have uh, Senate and referendums ballots that we're dealing with with um, elections um, through Alberta elections. So between the seven councillors, the school trustee, one mayor, and the Senate and referendum, we're dealing with five ballots. So to, to mail that off, it will be quite confusing for uh, electors to, to, to vote at home without understanding what they need to do and going into, even if you provide them with a piece of paper. So as the returning officer, um, I'm recommending that we off offer a total of three advanced vote dates on top of election day, and that we rescind the 2018 motion for mail-in ballots. Okay, any questions? All right, can I have somebody, um, Make a motion to rescind the resolution from council. I'll make that motion to rescind uh, uh, 038 2018. Okay. And I, I wouldn't, I, I would, I, I, they have to be two separate motions. Uh, Okay, so they can, I they can be one. They can be all in one. Yeah. Okay, so I, I move to uh, rescind uh, thirty eight dash twenty eighteen, and that the returning officer and substitute returning officer provide a total of three advance votes for the twenty twenty one municipal election at the dates and times determined by the returning officer. Excellent. Any discussion? No. All in favor? <laughs> oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you do. So, so if we do this and let's say we have a COVID fall, I'm theoretically talking worst case scenario. Do we have a plan for the old folks lodge? What do we do? Uh, they they, they already down, do. It, further it, it, down. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. At, every, okay, sorry. At, at every municipal <laughs> general election, we do do what we call an institutional oh, vote. Yeah. yeah, where we go to sorry. on election day, we do go to the lodge on the manor. Okay. Yeah. Bad. That's okay. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. Okay, item 8.2, 2021 municipal election institutional vote. Lindsay. Do you want me to say that again? Yeah, like I said, every year we do um, a municipal uh, election institutional vote and we uh, have uh, two returning officers attend the lodge and the manor on election day for an hour at each location. 
uh, for the scene to allow seniors to vote. Um, of course, this is closed just to the seniors. Um, and yeah, that's we and in order to do this, we require a motion of council. Great. There's a proposed motion that an in institutional vote for the 2021 municipal election be held at Rockview Lodge and Dr. Williams Manor on election day, October 18th, 2021. Can I get a motion from council? I'll make that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 8.3, 2021 council organizational meetings and cancellation of October 19, 2021 council meeting. That one's pretty straightforward. Can I get a motion? So moved. Excellent discussion. All in favor? Aye. Um, November 1st, due to the general election on Monday, October 18th, 2021, we also recommend canceling the October 19th regular council meeting. Proposed motion that the 2021 council organizational meeting be held on Tuesday, October 26, 2021. And that the October 19th, 2021 regular council meeting is canceled due to 2021 municipal elections on October 18th, 2021. Can I get a motion on that? Yep. All in favor? Aye. <clears throat> Carried. 8.4. Uh, temporary road closure request show and shine. August 28th, 2021. Can we speak to that one? Yeah, <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> um, so uh, we have in the past uh, received requests from uh, different people in town to host show and, show and shines. And uh, council is the only ones that can close the road. So uh, they we received a request to temporarily close um, McCool Street from the south end of Harvest Lounge, Lounge and Grill parking lot to the west end, um, to Western Drive to host a show and shine. Um, they have spoken to the affected businesses regarding the closure. And uh, because it is a Saturday, many of them will be closed. Um, we have notified uh, fire department and Trevor about it. There's no concerns there and uh, spoken with uh, Public Works and they will supply the barricades to block off the road. And again, they did, they did this two years ago, I guess, with COVID, they didn't do it last year, but uh, so I just need a motion that. Uh, Any questions from council? I just have one, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. um, does the event hold insurance? That I'm not sure, but I can, you can, we can put it in the motion. I, and do they put the town in as additional insured units on that. town property? Yeah, we can add that in there. Okay, if we can add that into the yep. motion. And does somebody want to make that motion? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I think we're all getting tired. <laughs> okay, board and all committee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <Give me> a <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Carried. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> 8.5, Board and Committee Applications, Subdivision Division and Development and Appeal Board, Cheryl Skelly. Um, so we need a motion um, that Cheryl Skelly be appointed to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board for the Town of Crossfield. Any questions? Any concerns? No concerns. Anybody want to make the motion? So moved. Thank you. Mayor, no. Council. Carried. No. Yeah. Down. Oh, All in favor. I, it's, 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 it's I am so, I am it's so okay. fired. You, you are doing a fantastic job. Uh, we'll Madam just, Chair. you know, casually go like this. Yeah, that's right. I love the reminders. Okay. Uh, Mayor Tennant, uh, update June 16th, 2021. I attended the Rural Women in Business put on by the Crossfield Chamber and Airdrie Chamber, although it was virtual, it was very well attended and very positive feedback. Um, Deputy Mayor Harris, I don't have any updates, but I do have um, just a couple of items for administration. I would like to um, just make a request to administration to come back with um, a report with information on standard road and sidewalk and lot sizes for Crossfield to be put into bylaw. I don't think this has to come forward like current right away, but sometime in the fall. 
Yes, so just so that you are aware, I've engaged with um, MPE Engineering to provide me costing with that because we would be using engineering services to develop a bylaw. So that will be part of the budget discussions in the fall. That is perfect. Uh, and it will include like standard road sizes yes. for width, standard width for sidewalk sizes, both in commercial and in residential, residential. areas, as well as um, standard lot sizes for Crossfield. So specific. lot sizes are determined through the land use bylaw process. So again, that would be part of our visioning process in the fall with council okay. and the CAO. But yes, we can definitely have discussions about that. Excellent. Okay. And then my second one would be, um, when is the last time we did a review on levies? So off-site levies are quite old. And this is another thing that we will be bringing to our budget discussions because they need to be updated. I believe our current bylaw is 2012. 2012. So of course, industry costs are a lot higher. Yeah. So we definitely want to amend that bylaw so that it's uh, reflective of today's prices. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Thank you for that. No problem. I appreciate it. Um, Councillor Cornelson. I don't have anything right now. Okay, Councillor Gustafson. Well, we had a, a, a very exciting uh, Rocky View Foundation meeting. We actually got to meet in person. Ooh. And uh, uh, it was uh, uh, at our new lodge in Airdrie. It is unnamed as of yet, so we're working on that. Um, it is the, uh, the ha still the Hamptons Inn in, in uh, Airdrie. So uh, uh, we had their manager's reports as per usual. Everything is very good in the lodges other than Cochrane. Uh, it, it, it is in, hopefully they'll get a new facility here in the near future. Uh, it is getting quite old as it was built in the, in the seventies. Uh, our chairman is stepping down due to re relocation to Strathmore. So we will be having a new chair and uh, it will be our, uh, uh, it will be the, uh, the County of Rocky View Reeve, uh, Mr. Dan Hen. And uh, that's about it for the Rocky View Foundation. Excellent, thanks, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Knight. Just got a couple things about the golf course. I've been over there a bit with Linda with the dry <coughs> weather last week. They would like to put a very thankful, thankful, thankful happiness towards your team, Marilyn and Joe Holstein coming over there addressing some water concerns that was fantastic they do have a question though do we know where the uh train went that was in front of the post office and does the town have a a plan for that in this new renovation downtown because i do believe it was donated from strike and they were saying it might go over at the golf course and we weren't going to use it ever again or yeah so uh as you might remember it used to be in front of the um, post office it was removed through the downtown uh construction i do know that it's up for discussion. I don't know if a final location was ever decided on. No. So um, we can certainly take feedback and have a look at logistics. Okay. okay thank you. I'll take it back to him. And it's sitting over, you know where it's sitting at right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. And I should, it's, yeah. Hey, Ms. Daffas. Yes. No, I, I don't remember hearing that, but I did remember a discussion about the golf course. There is somewhere in town. I remember somebody saying that they wanted to take a display, but I can't remember where it was. So I, I, I think we actually should always look at what the purpose of that train was for. It was mm -hmm. a bulletin board. Did it get used well? The community, yeah. Maybe that's, maybe it uh, just, the bulletin board thing kind of fades away, but maybe it still can. And, and there's a lot of, residents that do go to the golf course and, and maybe be able to see that so that's where it was at the golf course to have it moved out to the golf course yeah yeah, yeah that was the discussion that's, yeah that was the discussion yeah because it fits in with their logo too i don't know Lindsay, if we ever made a motion on that or not okay 
I think it's easily moved. It's just on railway ties. You pick it up and. I think it's not at the shop right now. It's at the. It is, yeah. yeah. It's heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Administrative update. So, because staff has presented their reports, I'll do my quick little update of information update. So, for the month of June, we've issued 16 new home building permits. So, that brings us at. Um, 41 new housing starts for this year. Uh, 314 Pure, that, uh, up, that report update will be coming to a future council meeting. And that was based on the applicant's request. Um, so as you know, we have a new building inspection service uh, with Park Enterprises. So we completed the request for a proposal process for building inspection services for the town. And the transition from superior safety codes to Park Enterprises Limited has gone smoothly. We've met with the representatives from Park Enterprises and uh, we're working out the transition and process details. So builders have been notified via email for the new permitting uh, forms. These all remain the same, but if they have any questions, they know how to get a hold of us and it's on the website as well. Uh, we held a council orientation earlier this month with legal counsel. So we're, we're still continuing to coordinate with urban systems on file follow-up for applications that they've been the project manager on. So currently there will be an application coming to the next council meeting for a subdivision on Western Drive. So the circulation period has ended. We're not aware of any concerns, but we'll bring the full report to the following meeting. Uh, Trevor and I participated in a um, engagement information session with the Public Securities Division engagement team of the Alberta Solicitor General's Office regarding upcoming changes to the policy and procedures manual. Uh, it's anticipated that the amended um, Peace Officer Program Policy and Procedures Manual will be released in late August 2021. So through that process, municipalities were able to participate in the survey and answer questions or provide feedback. Uh, so wastewater capacity, we had good discussions with council. The solution, the next steps are in place, which uh, Mustafa and both Joe have reported on this evening. Um, enhanced RCMP position. So our RCMP constable worked a total of 18 shifts this month. Some of her activities included um, internet safety presentations at WG Murdoch School and the elementary school. They did a final prep for forensic evidence presentation at WG Murdoch. They continue to do community patrols. School patrols are on hold at the moment due to summer vacation. And um, when I received the report, uh, they were in the planning stages of the bike safety program, which was uh, meant to be held last week, but due to the heat, it was postponed to tomorrow. So it'll be held tomorrow with Trevor, Trevor and Joseph. So we've also provided um, just an update, our monthly update on stats, citations versus warnings. And I've also attached as a part of my report, the speed sign data. So we don't typically collect this information in the winter months. We focus more in the summer months. Uh, May we had a bit of a glitch, the battery died and it wasn't caught in time. So uh, the information provided is specific for so as you can see on the speed sign data, um, um, from May to June, May 26th to June 7th, the sign was on Smith Avenue. June 9th to 21st, it was on Mountain Avenue. June 23rd to current, current location is on Whitfield Avenue. And um, I do know that it's effective. People are very, they see that sign. I mean, it can work in two ways, it can either slow people down or they can see how fast they can go with the <laughs> sign data. But um, I, I would be looking in the fall to order another sign. So that would be part of our budget discussions just because I think it's very effective. That's great, that was one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it for now, I think. Just curious, Merle, like uh, how much are other signs? Oh, I'd have to go back because we just purchased it a couple of years ago. I think it's around four, it's 4,000 max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that would be part of my budget request. Thanks. Any questions of Meryl? Nope. None for me. I don't have any questions or well, maybe just one. I'm just curious, like the speeding on limit heading out of town west by Vista yeah. is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if uh, we can do a few more patrols there or what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely bring it to Trevor and, and uh, the constable's attention just to put more of a focus there. And it doesn't seem to matter really what time of the day or what day it is. Nope. I know. They are mm -hmm. ripping. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We and how it. would you know? Yeah, I, I'm right there. <laughs> I know you are. And a lot of people come over the tracks and don't even slow down for the playground. So yeah. they just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic <service>. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for that, Meryl. No Can problem. I get a motion to accept for information? I'll make a motion. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Okay, uh, we have some correspondence, uh, majority of letters of support for the RCMP from different municipalities. Can I get a motion to accept this for information? I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And now we have a letter from the town of Pinoca asking for the town support in writing letters to our premier, our MLA and MP requesting more financial help for small rural business due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Any discussion? No, does anybody want to support it or do you guys want to just accept it for information? I didn't make a motion to we just accept it for information. Yeah. Yep. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and tonight we have gallery questions and answer period. Uh, gallery questions. Um, just as a reminder, everybody are for questions only. They're not full presentations. So we will take your questions and uh, we'll have a bit of a question period and we'll go from there. And I believe we have uh, a guest that would like to come up and uh, ask a question. So when you come up to the table, if you could just state your, your name and uh, your address here in Crossfield. So, Deputy Mayor Harris, if I can just do a quick little introduction. So, you can. Mr. Barry Hagen did um, connect with me uh, late last week just to see if he could get onto the agenda to have a discussion with council. And at that time, um, I indicated to uh, John for Hagen that our agenda was quite full and it was really hard to pinpoint. As you can tell from this <laughs> evening, it was hard to pinpoint a time for him to visit with you. So, I suggested he come for this portion of the meeting. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. And I think we can give, um, you know, about 10 minutes uh, for that. And I think in the end, we may ask for you to come back to a formal with the staff report, but let's see what you have. Much appreciated. Um, yes, I addressed a several items actually with the town administration some time ago. And because everybody was very busy, et cetera, it really was left kind of alone because it's, it was just not a critical item at the time. But there's basically three items that uh, we'd like to get some definitive answers to. And first one is, are there any plans to, over, to pave the overflow parking lot on the east side of railway, which is basically managed now by the town, which is basically across from Shorty's. Hi. May I answer that question? I think we went down this road already. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, because it being owned by uh, Imperial Oil, that uh, we would not be paving um, other property owners' plans for that. I think, did, correct That's me correct. if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, Lindsay, okay. is that, that was the motion that we, we, we did not do that. So. Yes. Um, Next is basically, what are your plans for allowing community members and taxpayers and business visitors more parking along the east side of Railway Street across from the AT, ATB block and the Arches block? Presently, there is an, an obvious desire to park there for Mountain View Credit 
from Mountain View Credit Union all the way to the liquor store. You see vehicles there parked just because it's convenient. Um, rural visitors and others with longer vehicles and trailers seem to need the extra space to park in order for them to do business in town. As private landowners, we need to protect our interests, but also want to be sensitive to the community needs. Allowing the community members and visitors parking access on private property is a liability and a maintenance concern. Mm -hmm. So if the council feels that this extra parking en enhances the downtown access and shopping experience, we are willing to provide these parking areas with certain conditions to be covered by the town of, by the town of Crossfield. Um, so yeah, there's a number of things that we'd like to see taken care of. John, if I may, um, you said uh, e east of the Treasury Branch and to the south of the Credit Union? Yeah. North of the Dobsons. Sorry? Okay. North of the Dobsons all the way up, right? Yeah, basically okay. all the way from the Credit Union to Dobsons, except for the SO or... The Imperial, yeah. Imperial. The Imperial site. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, okay, gotcha. Okay. So actually in talking to just a little bit of background and talking to many other people, they've asked me, you know, can we keep parking here or whatever? And I've given, <coughs> you know, a particular person said, yeah, you know, because they didn't have a parking stall in front of their shop that they could park all the time. So I said, well, for now, until we get this thing addressed with the town council, because it really becomes an area used by, by the taxpayers. So there's, you know, the, the liability issue is, of course, of great concern and some other things, you know, maintenance of the property, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We're not looking for rent, but, you know, there's, there's this maintenance of the weed control, snow removal, if that's what's required. Basically treat it the same way as the property that you have, that you're actually using from SO. So, you know, basically a tax exemption, perhaps that's, um, you know, I, I believe that's what SO has been given as well for, for their, their portion. So, you know, an appropriate signage, you know, just the, the standard stuff to make it, make it basically the same all across from, from the Mount, Mount View Credit Union to Dobson's. And the liability issue is obviously very, high on the priority list for, as far as we're concerned, because we don't want to get sued. That was yes. the third, that was the third item, was the liability. That was as one of, as part of that whole idea of, of using that area as parking space. Oh, okay. So the liability is definitely, we already have some today because people are parking up. Right, and then, so what is your vision? Whose liability would it be if uh, parking was allowed there? The towns, because it's the towns, people, taxpayers, business owners, everybody basically will be using that thing at will. Because there'll be free access. Um, we've created a bunch of entrances into these areas now that were, didn't exist before. They were actually isolated because they, there was no entrances and or fences there as well. And some of those fences have disappeared. So all those things are part of, um, you know, losing control of the property per se or from an access perspective. But it, but it also looks nicer having it all open and clean and clear. Okay, so do uh, questions from council? Uh, I have one for Merrill. What do we do currently for liability with the Imperial land? Uh, I'll let Lori speak to that. So, so the, the lot, the Imperial lot, what, what, what is, what, what is our liability with them? Okay. Maybe that's something administration can come back to. to, to. I, yeah, we'll, we'll have to come back to you. Just as a, a note for council. So within the town of Crossfield municipal development plan, which was adopted in 2018, there's a policy that speaks to large areas of surface parking within the downtown and entrance area. And the way the policy reads, it's discouraged. So I believe through the whole downtown revitalization 
um, process, which Ms. Falcon could probably elaborate on if required, parking was considered. And because we already have the imperial lot, like we've coordinated with that private landowner, um, and parking was considered when the revitalization was um, considered, you know, although the east side was removed, there were additional parking spots that were provided on the side street. Um, I, I'm not sure if council wants to consider additional large surface parking. I, th I think that um, to be fair, I think we would need all of the information mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Uh, to consider. So does council have any other questions tonight? Can I add a few other things to that? Yeah, sure. Just for consideration. <laughs> so because I believe what Merrill says is indeed part of the plan and the idea, but if that's what is carried forward and we of course want to not have the liability specifically that's one of the major items so then we'll ask that vehicular access to our private lands are blocked as it was before reconstruction of railway street so really it's up to the town to actually block the access again okay, that can be addressed in a, a report as well yeah mm -hmm. so i just wanted yeah. to make you know point that out so i just i'm just curious you know john did what are your plans we, we, we would like to build. We're working on some ideas. Yes. Um, can't divulge anything today. No, no I, I get that. But if well, you know what? It's, it's, our, it's our dream to, uh, to, to help downtown CrossFit yes. grow yeah. and to make it a nice community, like a, a nice center. So yeah. you know, <laughs> Mark is an architectural technologist. He's my partner in these two particular properties. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are... Um, you know, we've done some inquiries with certain people already. We've had some failures at the doctor's office, for instance. They are, they apparently have bought a house, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. So we are actively behind the scenes trying to um, create a project so we can enhance that whole area. Obviously, yeah. it's a large area, so it it'll is. be piece by, you know, it'll go yeah. in pieces. It, you know. Well, I so, love the thought of um, you taking that action. Yeah. to make partnerships and and build that i think that it would be the best thing for our downtown and well one thank of the you partnerships i like to do is with the, with the town office yeah. so. maybe one large donut shop because it <laughs> seems like that's what's working downtown something's working <laughs> something's working yeah oh, okay. or, or what goes well with donuts sugar and alcohol yeah, so. that's, yeah that's true. <laughs> i don't drink so. yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll like you know we're good. working on it we we Mark and I definitely are spending, you know, a fair bit of time in trying to create a project that makes viable, uh, has, you know, financial sense, right? Sure. And, um, you know, to overextend ourselves is not going to help anybody. Yeah. So we want to do it in a phased project. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. And anything else, then? Yes, Comments? one more question. Sure. I know that's probably a little bit away from us for now, but what are the plans for snow removal along Railway Street, including the sidewalks? So we, we have discussed that a little bit, and I would like to defer to um, Meryl or Mustafa on what it looks like. So that's a good question. It's in yeah. the queue. So Public Works, I'm working with Public Works and Mustafa as well will have input and we will be bringing a report to council. Okay. But um, of course, the, uh, the issue is, is we want to protect the asset that um, we invested in. Yes. So uh, we will be providing options to council for their consideration. Too. Yeah, I, I think... I'm sure that you all realize yeah. that this is a beautiful new Main Street. Mm -hmm. And yes, you don't want to ruin it just because somebody doesn't take care of it properly in certain sections. That's right. Yep. It's not going to snow here anymore. Just, yeah. Well, thanks, John, for yeah, uh, thanks, John. bringing that to our attention. Um, I would like to ask council if somebody would like to make a motion for council or for administration to bring back a report on parking um, and as well, John, if you're available to come back yes, and uh, just uh, present maybe in a little more formal manner and then we can align that with our staff report and, and be able to make some sort of a decision. 
we're looking forward to actually working with the, with the town council and, and the town itself as all the men to actually make the downtown core nicer and better. There's other projects that people have in mind, like art, whatever, you know, yeah. um, enhancing our fields, you know, is will just bring more people to town. And, mm -hmm. and things that can be done, you know. And I've talked to some of the men previously, and I think most of uh, I think we, we talked about those big, big blue wheels. We have, I think, six of them. <laughs> and, you know, people may laugh about that, but they could be an actual focal point at some point in time. But that's a discussion we can have. Excellent. Sounds They're sitting in my yard. In your yard. <laughs> in big boxes so sounds good well thank you for your time thank you all right thanks, thanks john meryl in that report can i can we get an understanding of what no go ahead an understanding of what the agreement is there but also what the number of cars that roughly park on that side because what is our availability of parking and what is i'm curious to know if people are parking in this private land if we close that all off what are we going to do for everything else how many Having an understanding of what that actually what, is. What the, what the real need is, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's full. Everybody it, keeps parked on the east side now. Yeah, so. Are, yeah. On the Imperial side across from the Arches? All the way down. Anywhere they have access to their parking in there now. And I know the Arches are using right across the street. That's yeah. where everybody who lives in the Arches now is parking That's is across park. the street. I think and they don't use the them dog parking, parking anymore? A lot of them I don't think like going back there at night, so that's why going. they're parking out front. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll have to charge some rent for the arches. Yeah, no oh, kidding. Okay. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You all drive by there in the morning, and it's full. They're, they've all parked on that side now. So. Okay. So we have to make that motion. Then? Uh, hang on, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. there is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Councillor Knight's making that motion. I'll make that motion to get that parking information as compared to our agreement on the current land location we're using and spaces that we're requiring okay Do, does administration need further clarification uh, so i'm going to be asking Stoffel to prepare this report so just for clarity uh, i just am curious um if i'm understanding correctly you would like to know prior to downtown development how many spots were roughly on the street i i would like to understand what the requirement is like if, if we were out there every day as joanne's saying that there's that many requirements like what are how many parking spots are available in the agreement that we have for the land that we already currently use? Is that 20 spots, 30 spots? With the existing Imperial law? Yes. I think for clarification, maybe it's um, what's the need? So are people actually parking where they're supposed to be parking or are they just going across the street to park and leaving this side empty? Because that's more convenient and easy. Yeah, and that would be a, an observation of noticing how empty the parking lot is behind the building. We could yeah. perhaps even take some time to do a couple of days and count and see what that looks like. Yeah. And and what was the is intention what behind the Imperial? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, John. What was the intention behind the Imperial? Was it to service the arches or was it to serve the downtown? It was intended to serve the downtown. Yeah. And, you know, John speaks to access, like prior to mm -hmm. the development access was not provided to his properties. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think there would have been a discussion with you that you would want access for future development, but now it, oh, you never did. Okay. Oh, <laughs> they just put them in. Yeah. <clears throat> Must off. Must off. Sorry. So basically for every lot,
Yeah. I agree. So, so um, then just to recap, um, we're asking administration to bring back a report with the full information addressing some of John's points. Weed control, snow removal, uh, tax exemption, signage, and liability. Yeah. That's perfect. And then in, in addition to that, um, what is the need for parking downtown based on today? Does that, is that correct? And uh, so uh, Councillor Knight is making that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Carried. Okay, upcoming events and programs. Crossfield Farmers Market Summer Session is open Thursdays, oh, 3.30 really to 7. What? No? Sorry, is there any other questions uh, for question period? Okay. okay, thanks. Just, oh, wait. We have one. We have one. Exciting. Feel free to come on up. Thanks, Mike. Hey. If you could just introduce yourself. I'm Gene Gauthier. I live on Lemon Avenue in the Trailer Park. I uh, just had a question about uh, Monson Street uh, paving you guys going to do. Uh, what are the age, uh, the water line, the tour line in there? Because in the last two, three months, it's been dug up three times for repairs. I think we'll refer this question to Mustafa. I think he could probably answer that one. So the age of the infrastructure under Munson. Okay, so do we do we know actually know the age of when it was serviced? Um, we don't know the exact age.
So there's, so are you aware of the three areas that have been dug up recently? Because you're saying there's three areas. Uh, two or three. In the one, by, one by the lodge, uh, one on the core of uh, Limit in Munson. And I think there was one by Smith. Uh, are those town oriented projects, Mustafa, that we're digging that up? Next one over. I'm trying to remember. Is that Harrison? A Harrison and yeah. <clears throat> So were you saying, Gene, is the there was more repairs, or you're thinking there were some more repairs on Munson? Uh, but there'd be more in that area between the lodge and limit. Oh, okay. Is your concern that it was dug up three times? About, and they uh, didn't coordinate. Three different breaks. Yeah, and they didn't coordinate um, those yeah. projects. Uh, yeah, so. Excellent. Thank you, Mustafa. Just on that Munson project, though, while we're talking about that again, I'm just curious if we can have some better signage around that construction than we have in the past. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you no. think they don't steal the signs? Yeah. yeah that's a, I'll check your back. All right. Thanks, Gene. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> Thank you, Gene. They stole my pylons that over at my shop the same night they stole signs. So. Okay. Upcoming events and programs, Crossfields Farmer's Market, Summer Session is open Thursdays from 3.30 till 7.00. Crossfields Farmer Market is accepting applications for the 2021 market season. You can email Crossfield. Excuse me, can we just finish the meeting before you guys continue? Thank you. Uh, you can email Crossfield Farmers Market at gmail.com. Could I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. All in favor?